Hey everyone, welcome back. It's good to see you guys. <laughs> the daily titles are pretty cool. I love the daily titles. I'm gonna keep the daily titles for anything that's a first playthrough. Maybe even for other stuff too. Yeah. Um, also, I got a <clears throat> I got a really interesting update. Um, so Lies of the Fallen has turned into Redemption of the Fallen. I don't know what happened, but uh, they offered me a contract for Sunday to stream Lords of the Fallen. So <laughs> after all that, all those shenanigans, all the all the drama, I, I guess they they changed their mind, or maybe for I don't know if it's for some people or whatever. But um, yeah, I was offered a contract to stream it on Sunday, so I'm gonna do that for two hours on Sunday. I'll probably play more of the game later on. I don't think I'm gonna just play it and then just stream it consistently. I'll probably go back to it. Um, but if anyone didn't know, there was like a huge bunch of behind the scenes stuff where they had a year and a half planned like a, a back and forth with my talent agency to give me and a bunch of other soul streamers really cool contracts, exclusivity of the game super early in-game exclusive content based on our channels and then a bunch of other stuff too a bunch of other crazy stuff then they took it back at the last second and now apparently it worked out so that's good no more drama no more lies of the fallen we're good um, but i will be playing it then on sunday for today we're going to be checking out more lies of p third play third day on the playthrough uh we got i think like 11 and a half hours roughly the 11 and a half in total and I just beat Saint, uh, what's his name again? Ardeus? No. Saint, Saint Ardeus? Was that his name? Your title says day two. Uh oh, let me change the title. See, the, the catchy titles are easier to pick up on so people can spot mistakes a lot sooner. There we go. Andreas, not not Ardeus, Andreas. Say Andreas. It's a cool sword, dude. This sword is so cool. So cool. It also does this too. If you push the LB and then Y, it turns into a spear. Really, really cool. And then stamina consumption is a lot less when it's in that mode too. Had to go to bed yesterday and you missed the win, Lux. I probably got it right after you went to sleep. It didn't take that long. Also, Senorita, what's going on? Welcome back. Is there a difference playing a game blindfolded and or a monitor turned off in regards to Mitch's Sekiro blindfolded run? Uh, monitor off versus blindfolded would be exactly the same. Like, if you're legitimately doing the blindfolded, there'd be no difference. Because, like, monitor off doesn't mean you have a lack of sound. You'd still have sound. Oh, okay, let's go and level... Oh, there's a picture of the guy over here, too. He, he's, he, he clawed his own picture. What's my early opinion of the game? So apparently I've done about a third of the game so far. It's gotten so much better to the point where... <sighs> I'm probably going to have a different opinion on it by the end of the game. Because I was like, eh, it's, it's pretty good. I had some critiques. The critiques I have now are so minor compared to how cool the game is that... I'd say they're kind of relevant at this point. I mean, there's, there's, there's some things they can update 100% if I was going to recommend an update. Make the messages pop up longer for points of interest when you're going through the world. And you see like a twinkling thing to, to interact with, like that icon. Make those messages appear for longer um, or just appear permanently. And then you can like just press A to get rid of them. Same thing with drops on bosses, all the items that pop up. Um, and allow for a select button to take you into a screen where it expands on the items you get. Because they have that for the journals. That'd be pretty cool. And again, just the guy when he runs. It just looks a little funny when he turns. Looks like he's sliding around a little bit. But that's probably very hard to get right. Trick weapons? Yeah, it's like a trick weapon. It, it doesn't have a handle that's separate from it. It's all one weapon. Tell me I'd be of service. Mm, I don't know what this apple does either. It says recollections. Hmm. If you guys think I should buy the apple and eat it or do whatever with it, I'm, I'll buy the apple. But for now, I have no idea. I think I have the attribute pur purification ampule already. 
Oh wait, is that actually just like a, a permanent one? It says consumable, but there's no number on it. Oh, maybe because he's only got one? NPC quest item? Okay, I'll buy the apple. Let's do it. Where's the level lady? She's moving around. The cathedral. It seems nowhere. Give it to Sleeping now. Beauty. <laughs> Saint Arby's. <laughs> those who went there seeking refuge became monsters somehow. Bronze, that'd be you but if you were a boss in the game. The disease turns you to stone, not into a monster. I'm worried about the Malam district, just below the cathedral. I wonder whether there are monsters there too. Goo Goo, what's up, dude? In Bloodborne, is it possible to have multiple poor man gems at the same time? Uh, I have no idea, actually. It's a good question. It depends on the shape. So the gems are, are based on shapes, if you look at the slots for the weapon. I don't think there's any other rules outside of that. But if, you can't have two of the exact same gem. Like, identical ones, as far as I know. But similar ones. I'm sure, I'm sure you probably already know that. So I, yeah, I don't remember what the poor man one does. You only farm the same shape. Yeah, so you'll see, like, it'll be, like, triangle. There'll be um, droplet and then radial. I think that's it. Okay, so we could get more damage here. Again, my damage is pretty damn good. I think I'm going to go for the bigger because my endurance has just been falling behind. So we'll do that. And then we gotta talk to the dog. The dog guy that came back here. I don't know where he goes. I'm assuming upstairs. Or maybe over here. And we gotta talk to Vanini as well. I've been investigating the puppet frenzy and it looks like I need your help. First, let me show you a little something I've been working on. I call it the Ergo Wavelength Decoder. Mm, the name lacks a certain flair, but... I assure you, it works. If my suspicions are correct, something in the puppet's very ergo is causing their aggression. My decoder can find malicious signals within the waves, but I cannot possibly get close enough to gather the ergo wave records myself. You, on the other hand, would you? Could you? I... <laughs> I refuse to believe the King of Puppets is truly behind this... this puppet rampage. It's too simple, but also a bit too much even for him. No. I suspect the Ergo itself is corrupted, or at least compromised. I do so desperately want to find the cause, as I'm sure you do too, my friend. It breaks my heart to see puppets turned into murderous tools of bloodshed. Oh, we got the Ergo Wavelength Decoder. I always welcome friends. Cool. Look like NBA players with that bush. With a bush? You mean my hair? <laughs> yeah, I tried to not go with the, the bald look this time. It's getting colder anyway, so it works. Um, but... Yeah, tried something different. I was actually going to go for locks, but I don't want to have my hair being pulled on that much because apparently it causes a lot of issues with your scalp, like headaches, and then uh, your hair can fall out way quicker. And then in terms of maintenance and stuff like that, it's a lot more work. So I think I'm just going to keep it like this. People have no idea so many secrets are buried. Thanks for keeping Antonia, give me some messages. I'm an old friend of Geppetto's. Make yourself at home. If you have any questions, ask my butler, Pollen. Your butler? He's my butler now. What you gonna do? I'm gonna wheel you out the window right here. Oh, there's no window, actually. Never mind. Damn it! <laughs> it's gonna push her out the window. And then just be like, it was the, it was the wind, dude. It wasn't me. <laughs> oh, it's you! This hotel is indeed a refuge from the dangers of the outside world. I am the Hound, a descendant of the city's most aristocratic families. Repaying debts is what we nobles do. Anyone with a worthy spirit is especially welcome. Accordingly, I shall give you the honor of laying eyes upon my treasure. 
However, you must prove your worthiness. For this legendary treasure, mm, the ergo of a powerful enemy shall suffice. It's up to you if you want to make the exchange. So he just has the transpositions of the rare ergo, that's it. But he's got some new ones, though. I guess he gains new ones as you get new ones. Parade leaders ergo, we already used. Broken hero and the king flame. Twisted angels ergo. B for technique. And then we have the amulet. You guys were saying the amulets are so heavy that they're not as worth using. Has a chance of none being consumed when pulse when using pulse cells. Ooh. Okay, so that sounds cool because I could put that on in a fight. Use a pulse cell, go back in the menu, take it off, and switch it for something. If I'm quick, if you're really good at menuing, that would be a really sneaky way to see if you could get an extra heal, right? Or you start the fight with it, first hit you take, you switch it out after that. Trident looks really cool too, but I, I, I can't really use it right now. And then, yeah, we, we don't have the chance to get the parade leaders or go. Need the boost for Lawrence, blood level 4, since he one-shots anyways. Yeah, he's crazy, dude. I can't wait to go back to Bloodborne and do a run that's uh, low damage again on it. With the DLC. I, I used to pe be pretty bad at Lawrence. I still am, because I would always cheese him on phase 1. There's a way to make him do the same attack for all of phase 1. So I did that way too much. Need to go back and do it the right way. Alright, let's go and continue. I wish I could upgrade this weapon a little bit more too, but we don't have the, the resources. And the guy, he ran out of, I think it's called Dark Moon Stone or something like that. So we got the Archbishop's Altar. Uh, they were saying there's another area. Is it continuing from here? Because everything's pretty linear. So far we haven't actually had to backtrack too much. Uh, you love watching these playthroughs because you'll probably not play this game just due to time. So your playthrough is like, it's like yours, even though you didn't watch other streamers play it. You were waiting for me to play it, Bun. I really appreciate that, man. I'm surprised at how much of a positive response this game is getting from everybody. Because even games that are pretty damn good that I end up liking a lot, it, it's hard to get everybody to actually have outstanding reviews for it. There, ha there hasn't been a lot of bad feedback. Like... The worst feedback I've seen isn't even like that good. Like it's not even that put together of an opinion. It's just like a, it's like a, it's almost like a random statement that doesn't even really like explain why it's bad. Whereas other games, like when people crit, crit, uh, critique them, if they have an opinion where they think it's bad, like they can say a little bit more about it. I don't feel like there's as much stuff to criticize. So they did a good job. Guess we're going here. We can break the boxes too, right? Oh, never mind. Some of the boxes break. Like those ones. MC is not talking like all the FromSoft games. MC, who's the MC? MC is not talking like all the FromSoft games. Oh, the main character, yeah. Well, I mean, if he did talk, it would probably be kind of weird. Like, how many Souls-like games are there where the character even talks? In general, like Code Vein, I don't. Your character doesn't talk in Code Vein, does he? I don't think so. Mortal Shell, your character doesn't say anything. In Moonstone, Lords of the Fallen One, I don't remember the character speaking at all. Oh yeah, in Sekiro, that's that is a. Uh, it's it's kind of brief though. It's kind of brief. It's not too much. It's like just the right amount. Oh, this is like Witches of Hemwick, dude. This is like the Forbidden Woods. Remnant. I haven't played Remnant 1 or 2. Prot was just a small town on the coast of little importance. Before Elysian Boulevard was built, this place literally was all there was of Krat. But when some in the city prospered, they they left the old town behind. 
Through isolation and neglect, Krat's first incarnation became nothing but dangerous alleys and desperate slums. On the bright side, I guess, the whole city of Krat's pretty much like that now. The old town caught up with the new. It's true what they say. A receding tide sinks all boats. Also, Oggs, what's up, dude? Welcome back. Is this Blaith? He kind of reminds me of him, the uh, the character that has the, the other dog mask. I, I'm so bad with remembering the names other than just some of the main characters. Uh, Trident has been your savior with 30% crit effect. I was wondering how much damage it actually does, because I haven't tried anything that has that effect yet. But I think there was another weapon that had the same thing on the handle, specifically. Uh, also, yeah, Remnant. I might try Remnant 2 at some point, uh, but... Actually, I think I was offered a sponsor for Remnant 2, and I wasn't streaming during that time. I should have done it. Um... Remnant 1, though, I watched it, and, like, a lot of people said the only thing redeeming about it's the co-op, but they just, they spammed a lot of additional enemies, and the main unique enemies are not holding their own. So I don't know if they finished the game, or, sorry, if they if they cleaned that up in the, the second one. Sorry, wait, what did this say? A child who was a blessing to their family lies here. May he rest in peace. And then we got this thing we can't activate. Rumored Wizard of Oz DLC. <laughs> what if we can activate that other gazer later on? This is also this has given me like a a combination of the mission in Outlast. Is it, I don't is it the first Outlast? No. There's a part in Outlast too while you're in the woods when you escape the cornfields and the farm, and then it also reminds me of Resident Evil Four a little bit too. Outlast 2. Outlast 2 was pretty funny. I can't wait for the the actual third one. You know, aside from Trials, I know Trials came out, but I really want to play a third one. Oh, we got another Fable Catalyst. That's good. It's been a while, dude. Too expensive to buy. I'm not going to be spending money on Fable Catalyst. I want to get the drops. The fact they make the Fable bar go back up when you're in combat is kind of nice, though. I wasn't paying attention to that as much on the first day playing it. Oh, shit. Wait, are those traps? Those bear traps? Or are they puppet traps? Dude, sounds like one reborn. Almost, almost kind of like a Call of Duty zombie as well. Oh shit, what? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Where'd he fall from? Was he on the tree? Or did he, did he jump from up there? I didn't see that guy. Keep forgetting to use the Fable Arts. That's actually something that really helped me on that last boss fight. Acidic Crystal Spear Blade. A in advance. Ooh, but it but it's got acid. It's got a status effect. That's pretty cool. And like you guys were saying, there's no way to respec, right? Like you can't change your stats Let later on. Let strength be granted, so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. Wait, I don't know. I haven't changed these in a while. Talks about the game so far. Oh, you know, we should have been changing this stuff a little bit more. The converter, uh, 3.6, 3.9, 3.9. fire damage. Physical acid damage reduction, though. That's, that's a lot better. Could have, could have used that for the last fight. Don't know what the relevance of it is now. Uh, and then this one's just pretty much everything is better by quite a lot. I should have used that. Oh, you can respec. Okay, so yeah, we. De I, I definitely want to respec if we're gonna do an NG plus run. That'd be cool. Or even even, even maybe do it during this playthrough. I might respec if you can do it multiple times. Uh, Titan, thank you so much for the 68 months. Welcome back, dude. How's the game so far? It's really good, dude. 
It's getting to the point where, like, I can definitely say it's the best Souls like I've played at this point. Let be grand I don't want to say that and then regret it later, though, and it changes and it gets worse, but people have said that it gets better. Be and I've only played about a third of it, apparently. Like, yeah, hell yeah. Definitely, definitely beats Code Vein for me so far. It definitely beats Mortal Shell. Those are my two favorites for games that were inspired directly from Dark Souls. So. Oh my god. That's, that's not good at all. Oh no! <laughs> I just I just criticaled myself off of the thing. Damn. Going a little bit too hard on the gameplay over here. Uh Safira, thank you so much for the 25 months as well. Welcome back. Pinocchio? Oh yeah. I'll never look at Pinocchio the same in my life. You can respec on limited times, okay. But it gets more expensive. Is that something that you get later in the game? I can confidently say almost all puppet parts you find for equipment are going to be better than the ones you previously have in every slot. Okay. I know that there, there's liners that I could have bought, but I didn't purchase them yet. I probably should have got those and tried them too. But the, again, I should be paying attention to the status effects, the types of enemies, and switching the defense up for that. Definitely not used to doing that at all. In these types of games, I pick whatever looks the coolest in general, and that's it. Like, even if a weapon is better sometimes, if a weapon is just cooler with the moveset, uh, and it looks better, I'll even sometimes prioritize that. So just because it's more fun, so... Maybe I'll do a 200 IQ playthrough on this for this one. <laughs> Tom, what's up, dude? How's it going? Oh, the butterfly. Tom, do you like butterflies? I can imagine Tom having this, like, secret hobby of going and catching butterflies like SpongeBob. Although, I guess he catches jellyfish, but he's got, like, a little net, and he catches them in a field by himself. And then as soon as somebody sees him, he's, he just pretends that he's playing guitar. It's at his guitar. He's like, I was just writing the song. I wasn't catching butterflies. So, yeah. Like, the main antagonist of Silence of the Lambs, exactly. <laughs> Also, Tom, I don't know if you play Souls games at all, but this is a good one. I think you were here watching it before. I don't know if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Actually, do you even play games at all? Like, what do you play if you even play games? Because I've never seen you stream a game before. Anyone that likes music, most definitely go check out Tom's stream. He does a lot of guitar. He's actually my guitar teacher right now, too. He's been teaching me a lot of really cool stuff. But his original music is amazing. It's some of my favorite stuff. He's got a bunch of stuff on Spotify. Um, both that and his Instagram are linked right there. But he also has a Twitch channel. So click his name and follow his Twitch. You want to see him do covers of different songs. His own live playthroughs. I think sometimes it, there might even be requests. But yeah, it's, it's a really good stream. It's also, I think he's live before me too. So you don't have to feel like you're just abandoning me completely. Ah. Oh shit, that miss. He, he kind of just let me live there. Okay. I'm gonna run for a second here. Can't use the cube either. We're in an interesting situation. Almost got a heal. I don't know, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to, oh, I didn't press LB. There we go. There's my heal. This guy's way tankier. I 
Gamer, why didn't you hit him with a charge R2 when the bar was flashing? That's how you get a critical attack. As I'm like trying to. That was so funny yesterday. So many people said that as if they didn't see me trying to do it. Not that it even bothered me, but like I thought that was I thought that was really funny. Why aren't you using the mechanic streamer? Followed by someone being like, what's the white bar mean? And it's just like, why are you using the white bar? Like, Did you remember you could do these attacks? You should do this. Change this. Use this weapon. That should, the, the white bar thing should be the title for tomorrow. I've been trying to make really funny titles. A lot of Tarkov, but you've played Souls games, really loved Elden Ring. Don't stream any games, though. No one needs to see you get nonstop dead. I would love to watch that. That'd be amazing. I would actually argue and say that that's just as interesting as seeing someone do the opposite. In between is where it's a gray area. If, if you're like kind of okay, but you're not doing anything special, usually people prefer watching someone get their ass absolutely handed to them or just dominating. It's it's nothing between. That's why you got to be a little bit unique sometimes. If you're if you're not sure about being the absolute best, you got to do something weird. All right, we're gonna repair this. Yeah, the worse you are, the better the better the content. And the better, like, if you're really, really good, then the only downside is people will expect you to always be good. And if you're not good, then they'll be like, oh, that sucks. Even though you're still pretty good. <laughs> and they'll expect that you, everything's just easy for you. Even though you got to practice a lot. Why don't you play the game exactly like I do? In the future, that'll be a thing. You'll be able to just pl like, you'll be able to pick up the controller from where you are on my game. They already have that on PlayStation, but it'll be like the whole chat can do that. Instead of crowd control, it'll be actual direct remote play. I sense that there's going to be someone throwing something at some point, but I'm not sure though. Being very careful here because we're on thin ice. We gotta manage the heals. Is there wait, I, I don't have an amulet that restores health slowly, does it do I? No. I have some pretty good ones though. Wanted Black Rabbit Brotherhood. Oh wait, I hear somebody else. Be careful. Yeah, this is definitely like a Resident Evil area. A uh, criminal group of four stalkers charged with theft, assault, tampering with bodies, and other serious crimes. Their base is the Malum District, so be extremely careful when entering it. We got one that looks like Solaire. We got one that looks like Mr. Eggman with, like, bunny ears from Sonic with, like, a gas mask. We got a dude that looks like a regular dude with, like, something going on, and then we got a bunny. Okay, interesting. The Hob Gino dichotomy, meant with love and respect, exactly. Although the Hob situation is kind of funny because people say he's actually bad, but he's doing really, really good. He just makes it look panicky the whole time, but he actually he ends up doing it. And that's a whole other category of interesting because it's like his execution just looks scary, but then he actually does it. When can we control the streamer? Well, when Neuralink's invented, you'll be able to remote access my brain, probably. If they get to me first and I'm, I don't have my, my way with my, my rights. If they install it against my will, then yeah, you'll be able to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> Use that 5G satellite interception. Uh, Kathy, what's up? Have you seen my nukes? I was robbed and I can't find them. That'd be a really big thing to steal from somebody. I don't think there's really small nuclear weapons. They, they all seem like they'd be pretty big. So I have not seen them. It's wild to you that one day shit will be real and your kids will think that you're weird for not wanting a brain, imp brain implant. I think that heavily depends though on how you raise your children. Like, so some people, for example, right now, could could be raising their kids like mainstream, and then some people would be doing like an underground kind of approach where they teach them the difference. 
um, and get them to like you know un like want to know the difference rather than just kind of go along with that being a normal thing. Um, with with a lot of different subjects, so it's like if, think of like someone that's homeschooled. Not to say homeschooling is like the best thing, but like. Imagine if you were homeschooled and you didn't know regular situations that happen in a regular school. So once you grow up, like you're, you, there's all these things happening that are super foreign to you because you weren't outside of the homeschooling exposed to different types of socialization. Even, um, even that would be like foreign to you. So whatever you're exposed to, is what you're going to uh, run with, unless of course you're shown multiple different options and, and you know kind of encouraged to be curious and question different things. So while I do think that, I don't I don't know if everybody's children will be like, yeah, like you should just put chips in your brain. But <laughs> there could be a point where putting the chip in your brain is actually a good idea. Who knows? Like I, I, we don't even know that like what that'll be like. There's just concern because it's so weird right now. But if it helps certain people, like I said, it could actually be worth it to certain individuals. Oh, I missed. Damn it. No, why'd I do another one? This guy reminds me of an enemy from Bloodborne for sure. Can't tell you which one though. He's walking away. I think he's going to give me some quartz, potentially, because the, the bigger enemies that are not bosses usually give quartz, right? Oh, shit. Okay, let's not die here. Let me, let me think about this one. Fire abrasive. I have a feeling that they're going to be weaker to fire still, because that that these enemies look very similar to the other ones that are weak to fire. You're homeschooled till eighth grade. It was weird going to school at that point. Perpetual. I can imagine. That's a long time. <sighs> See, now I'm kind of just really wanting to kill that guy. I have this. I have this bad habit of like not knowing when to back off here because we, we could try to cheese him but what's the likelihood of winning like sushi but think pickles are bad I've been getting better with the pickle situation okay how many tossable things do I have I can't remember what they're called uh Didn't I pick one up, or was that just... It was just the abrasive. It wasn't actually a throwable item. Pickle sushi? Uh, no, thank you. I like pickled things. I like. I really like pickled radishes, pickled onions especially, and uh, pickled beets. I'm sure pickled carrots would be pretty good. Why are you wasting attacks? Exactly. Okay, let's make him turn around and then just get some hits in. Oh, he did make it in here. <laughs> Imagine I could send him on the elevator. Dude, what if he? What if he's stuck? He's he's stuck now. Is he stuck? Oh, okay, he's not stuck. I was hopeful. Nope. That's it. I knew it. Come back again. You're the only other person that you've met that actually likes pickled beets. Oh, they're so good, dude. Damn it. You're currently eating pickled beets? Wow. The timing. Okay, so we want to find out how to get into the top of this place. Or behind. Uh, I wonder... No, there's no there's no way to get in on the left side. 
Pickled fish? Yeah, that'd be a little bit weird. <laughs> oh, there's an item here, too. What is that thing? Is that a dog? Ah! No, I can't. Yo. Stop that. Saw blade. That's not worth it at all. Wow, okay. Oh, I can't even jump from there. Fire canister. What do the canisters do? Oh, it can be thrown at close range. Okay, so I want to use those on the big dude. Switch the cube for the fire canisters. Here we go. Now we're cooking, literally. You ever chugged an entire jar of pickle juice? No, and I probably wouldn't do that at all. Looking for cheesing technique part one did not work. No, it didn't it didn't go too well. It's because I had one HP. The, the cheesing technique saga works really well. Becomes a, a successful endeavor when you have health. Because then you can make a mistake. It's like if you if you did a science, science experiment where there's like a 50% chance of the experiment blowing up every single time and killing you. It's like, well, you probably wouldn't get too far unless you're really lucky. <laughs> that's, what it's, that's what it's like. Not good odds, unfortunately. Although, once in a while, there's those moments where I just go in and I just somehow 1 HP kill a dude from full health, and I've never seen him before, and that's that's why people like these games, right? You can do that. Pickled okra. I've never actually had okra by itself. Is this another gazer? Did I go in a circle? I think I went in a circle, didn't I? All right, going through again. I'm gonna rest here and then actually get back to where we were. still chase me. I'm going to have both of them on me at the same time. Dude, I'm so lucky that I upgraded the stamina, but we needed to regen faster. Which is probably based on the build. Yo, calm down. Oh no, we got the red guy again. Uh, can we just not do that ever again, please? Not cool, dude. Oh, wow. The dodge, dude. Yeah, that's right. I'll stop your red attack. You're afraid. You're afraid. Come on. I bet you won't do it. I bet you won't do it. I still bet you won't do it. I bet you're afraid of getting staggered. Oh, you're still afraid to get staggered. <laughs> I knew it. I was also afraid of dying there, too. It wasn't as good as it looked like it was. You don't really throw the canisters. You kind of just drop them. Okay, so it's kind of like a, a rope Molotov in Bloodborne. Anybody actually use those anytime? I feel like they, they were pretty interesting in PvP. But even then, like, I couldn't find a use for them. Got a few banana peppers. You're, you're not really sure what to do with them. Any suggestions? Banana peppers? Just eat them. I mean, you could also slice them up and put them on something, but I'm not sure. They're pretty. They're pretty good on pizza, and they're good on like if I. 
If I had a sandwich, I would say that they'd be pretty good on a sandwich. Or a charcuterie board, there you go. Nope. Okay, I almost have enough. I think I could transform the weapon, but... Hmm. What do we do here? <laughs> that was close. Oh, come with the trade. I'm trying to save as much health as possible. I don't know if... Did I read this? There's even treasure to be found in the collapsing shack. Find out what happened to the greedy couple. Damn. Backstory. Pickle the banana peppers. Imagine your name was Peter. It's like Peter pickled banana peppers perfectly. Read some references in this game are from the original Pinocchio. Cool when old stories are remade with a twist. We were talking about that. There's tons of stories to continue to keep using in games that exist. And some, some that people wouldn't even really know about, but if you did, it would make it even more enjoyable. So I think they should keep doing that kind of stuff. Yo! Killed me. Oh my god. <sighs> Alright, let's make it there again. Make it there again with more health. We're getting some farming going on at the same time. If I just die on the way to that 5,000, no, it's going to be painful. Raging Pan, it's going pretty good. How are you, man? Alivent. <laughs> Homesteadative. Homesteadative. Raze, how are you? I don't think I said hi to you. Oh. Uh, yeah, yo, that's not cool. Okay, I'm gonna go back because now I'm afraid of dying again. There's too much murder happening. Right? Oh, fuck. Well, there goes the 5,000. Average Souls experience, yep. Now it's 1,369. This area is definitely very hard to just run through. I haven't been doing that too much. Even on deaths, I've been killing every enemy for the most part. There's only a couple areas I tried to do that with, where if I had already cleared it, I would run through it. This one's a very difficult one to run through. These enemies are genuinely like a whole step up from the ones at the beginning of the game, like the basic puppets. So I can imagine if, if they increase even more in difficulty, just the, the normal ones, they, they have everything set up so well for the ambushes. Fable Catalyst, another one. Dim Ergo Fragment and a Star Fragment. That's pretty cool that he's giving me the poppable Ergo as well. It's not a bad trade-off. This game's fantastic, Vincent. I'm glad you like it. That's good. Why do some of the attacks the enemy does look like a sped-up Guardian anim Ape animation? Oh, I've noticed there, there's quite a few things in this game that are 100% just taken from Bloodborne or from other games. And they've just they've just taken those animations and made them attacks. 100 percent And then there is some that are completely brand new that are really cool. Is he already dead? I'd love to see a developer interview and see the inspiration they got outside of Souls for this, because there's definitely a lot of other things going on. 
I'd be surprised if they said nothing. That'd be pretty wild. Whoa. Ooh, surprise. You can stop attacking now, please. Oh, the other one's got a lot of health is coming out. Okay, we're gonna fight him in this area. A little bit safer. Wish I could cancel attacks. Oh, I got the double dodge now. I forgot about that. I made a habit of not doing that because I feel like it would waste stamina, but we got the double. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it doesn't give me the backstab on him. Wow, he cancelled it too. What's going on, Atomic? How are you doing, dude? Love and Lies of Peace so far? I'm glad that you like it, dude. Right, you, I'm assuming you've been playing it, too. How many people actually have still not finished the game in chat? Don't know if you got to this place in the game yet, but there's a grab animation. The guy spins you around and the camera work for that is absolutely phenomenal. I don't think I've seen that yet. There was a grab that was really funny, though, with the one boss where he, like, slams you off the ground, then he eats He, like, bites a part off your face or something like that. <laughs> I was like, that's a pretty crazy touch at the end there. Just him eating, trying to eat you. That... <laughs> Thank God you're not a human. Does it count if you haven't installed the game? No, definitely not. Halfway. Haven't finished it yet, Mo? Okay. Two and a half runs in, Semantic. Try hard. Three bosses left to beat. How do you know you have three left to beat? Did you look it up? Or does it tell you? Chapter 5, okay. I'm assuming the chapters are based on, like, the areas on the map, or is there something else you, you can see to see the chapter? That amulet that has the chance to not consume the pulse thing might be a good idea right now. It doesn't make me too slow. I don't know, man. The equip load is pretty heavy on it, though. Oh, why'd I use that? Here we go. <laughs> Wasting it. It's so much better in the extended form. Should be using that immediately as soon as I get it. Nice bin right there. AC6 is basically fully reinstalling in this update. You do try real hard. <laughs> Finished Liza P four times, including um, two new game pluses. Really amazing game. But Larry, that's a good sign that you played it multiple times. Although I feel like a lot of you guys do new game plus in a lot of games. I, I do sometimes, but because I usually end up playing a different game or do runs on them, it doesn't happen as often anymore. Like, I've never done new game plus on Sekiro or Elden Ring. Actually, I don't even... Have I done... I think I did New Game Plus and that's it on Dark Souls 3, but never New Game Plus 2. And then on the first one and on Dark Souls 2, I went pretty much the whole way. Bam Maniac, what's up, dude? I 
All right. This might be a little bit tricky, but I'll try. Try again. Where's the big dude? Tried to block it, dude. He was almost dead. And I used two of the fable things. That's crazy. <sighs> Say hello, TikTok. I'm live right now playing Liza P in bio. Or Lincoln bio. Okay, here we go. Hello, TikTok. I'm live right now playing, you guessed it, Liza P. Link in the bio. <laughs> Isn't that so good for on the spot? Announcements, dude. Just got everything on lock. If if a camera crew literally came to the door right now, it'd be like, "You're you're a contender to win a trip to Hawaii on a reality show that someone else signed you up for." I'd be like, "Let's go, let's do it." Like, just always ready, dude. <laughs> always ready. You need to download TikTok just to watch that. Well, actually, I do have one. So if you have one already, definitely follow mine. There are some pretty good clips on there you might have not seen before, and there's gonna continue to be stuff on there. Oh boy. That dude is one of the most fury attack spammers in the game. Oh yeah, definitely. Just need to make it there. Make it there and then not be chased by an army and we're good. That is one thing that's pretty decent though. There, there isn't like an infinite amount of enemies chasing you. So like I could just make it right here and then fight them. I should have done that before. And then I say that, and then that happens. Can I get both of them? Oh shit, no. Never mind. Okay, now I'm gonna have to back off and get this other guy. <laughs> this thing's basically a boss. This isn't DS2. Every man and his dog do not chase you back to your souls or the boss door. Thank God. Apparently, the very first Dark Souls, before they updated it the first time, uh, the enemies had an unrealistic amount of chasing. And again, like some of them would actually hurt. They or sorry, they would close doors on you. Have I heard the new Tesseract album, Gandalf? I don't think I've heard the full thing, but I heard a single off of it. There's a music video that they. They filmed. I wasn't a big fan of that song though. I don't think it was even close to anything else that they've done, but I can see the direction they're going and a lot of bands, what they tend to do, if they're not necessarily like, if they're not like big, big bands, especially if they just do music for fun, like they don't necessarily need to live off the music. They'll just make albums for like whatever they want to do. They don't really try to like keep making the people happy. So Tesseract was one of the bands though that were pretty much almost their entire discography did make me happy. <laughs> But now they've they've hit a point where I feel like it's it's sim similar to Periphery. Like Periphery's music's just not the same anymore for me. Some of it's good, but like their older albums, consistently almost all of the music I enjoyed, and then now it's like only like a few songs off each album. 
Uh, and then same thing with Veil of Maya. Veil of Maya's whole album, like all their albums in general lately, they just... Not the same. Um, Born of Osiris mainly just because of Jason Richardson leaving, but... Still, you know. The lack of urgency to heal frightens you? Good. I'm trying to make this a horror game experience. It's October. It's early Halloween. You know there's an elevator behind you? I do know about it. I'm just trying to kill the big guy. And I'm going to take a wild guess and say there's probably not another um, stargazer right up the elevator. I would imagine it's not that that close to the other one. Because usually there's only one per area. It's kind of like Bloodborne style. So with that being said, I'm not going to necessarily do myself any better by taking it right away, will I? I don't know, you guys would know better than me, but I just I just assume there's probably no benefit of taking it now than going back and killing that guy. Right after taking it. But we're getting close, so I think we're gonna kill him right now. We can get just a one-on-one -on -one attempt. Oh it, it's oh it's a it's a shortcut. Oh shit, okay. Well, you know what? Because I wasn't going to take it originally, I'm going to honor my original commitment, and we're just going to go with this. It's going to do it. Oh, it stays buffed even if you extend it while it's on fire. That's cool. Dude, no! Oh, that was it. He's gonna be dead. A man of honor and fortitude. Well, it's kind of like one of those things where if I played this game and you guys couldn't say anything, like because you weren't here, then I wouldn't have gone and taken the elevator at all. I wouldn't have checked it. I would have killed the guy first. Just because my assumption would be that it wouldn't lead to another one of these, but the fact it's a shortcut's just kind of like a, it's a random gamble, right? If you go and take an elevator anywhere in this game, or take a, a staircase, go through a door, drop through a floor, or something like that. You don't know if it's going to be a shortcut, so I would have assumed that it wasn't and just tried to kill him. I'm also pretty stubborn, so I mean, killing him is going to make me way happier this way. <laughs> I might as well do it. Might as well die on that guy, too. Focus, determination, and sheer will. Sometimes, uh, sheer, sheer tomfoolery, dude. Just being silly for the sake of being silly, because we can. Definitely not trying to quantify rocket science here. We're just playing the games. So. <laughs> not trying to too hard to backseat regarding the shortcut. Well, I asked you guys anyway. It's all good. I I haven't actually had anything ruined so far from people telling me anything. But it's been funny watching chat react to people trying to trying to tell me stuff. They're like, "Why are you saying something about the game? Well, stuff backseat," and then like you argue with each other. It's like, calm down. Still a high tier game. Oh yeah, definitely. What's going on, Pringato? Is this a good first Souls game for a beginner? Uh, I could see it being a pretty good game, but I don't think there really is a good First Souls game for a beginner. I think it's whatever you enjoy, because if you like the game more, you're going to have a better time, and it's going to feel easier. So whatever you think is cooler is the, be the best option. That's, that's kind of how I look at it, is just pick the one you like the most, and it seems the most promising. Dude, he went for it that many times in a row? Holy shit. This thing's insane. That was the most aggressive I've seen that enemy. He, did, he, he kept going for it. Wow. It's scary. It's the point of living without goofing off. Exactly. You gotta goof off a little bit. 
He won't stop unless you're really close. What? <laughs> What's going on, Binary? How are you doing? That's ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna try to like see where the dude's coming from that's following me when I drop down. If I can even get him to actually chase me to the, the edge of the cliff and then I'll fight him on there. Yeah, my stamina regen is slow. Okay, so he's backing up. That's why I didn't see him when I was falling off before. He he doesn't necessarily want to fall down. It's just because I dropped down too soon, so I could wait. And then he might not run back here. It's probably the better way to do it. Slum Shack key, nice. So I wonder if that's the the key for the from the very beginning, because this is going to be the shortcut anyway. So I guess we'll we'll see. That's probably the progression point, right? Or oh, we have to we also have to go through where he came from too. So let's check this out quick. Maybe it's just to get some items. You missed pre patch Andreas. He had so much health. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to put myself through New Game Plus with like, or like a level one run just to to suffer the original update. How long did it take them to change it? Oh, that's literally the the key from the inside. That's kind of lame. Oh, I thought there was gonna be an item in there or something like that. New DS spinoff looks so similar, Sean. Yeah, it's supposed to be inspired by Bloodborne, and then it it has a lot of Bioshock styling in it too, with the way the world is made, and it's and then the storyline is a take on Pinocchio, so it's 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 quite a lot of different stuff at the same time. But also done in Unreal Engine, which is uh, it's a nice bonus. I was always saying if they made Dark Souls in Unreal Engine, it would be game changing. They would be probably dominating even more. I don't know how they would be able to maintain their current. Uh, physics, because I think they use Havoc for physics. I don't know if they can implement that into Unreal Engine or if it conflicts with anything. And then also if it would ruin the style, but I think that Unreal Engine 5 for their next game would just be wild, dude. It would be... It would, it would almost be too much. <laughs> like, not even necessary, but like over the top, though, for sure. Because even Unreal Engine 4 in this, it makes it look really good. Changing full minis three times can stun lock most enemies. Oh, charging, charging them. So you mean like holding the, the Y button, right? Bioshock blew your mind in 2007, but it hasn't aged that well in your opinion. Yeah, we had we had a sponsor for the uh, Bioshock Infinite, and I remember I played it a little bit. I said I was going to continue it and beat it, and then I kind of just like fell off of it. 
it, it's still really, really good, but it does look a lot worse than what I remember when it came out. And that's that's also way newer than the original one, so I can imagine Bioshock 1. It, it definitely needed the remaster. Or the, the whatever they did to it. I think it was a remaster. down here. Hmm. Okay, so that stamina effect only lasts for a little bit when we transform the weapon. That's interesting. Get a sponsor in 2013. No, no, the sponsor for Bioshock Infinite was, like, recently. Like, there's still sponsors for games that are old all the time, right? Like, I've done... Most of the, most of the sponsors I've done are for games that didn't just come out. So, um, no, that was that was only literally, like, less than a year ago. I haven't streamed since 2013. I started in late 2014, but mainly actually had a part-time schedule in 2015, so it's been, been about eight years. Sawblade, here we go. Giving me shitty items. Legion arm only build is 100% doable. That's something I was asking about. I was like, can you do consumables or, or just like... You know, whatever, I guess the Legion Arm would use those magazines, so maybe that counts as a consumable. Got the Vivid Ergo Fragment, nice. Streamer, it's not pronounced Ergo, it's pronounced Ergo. Ah! <laughs> what if your nose got longer every time you died? I'd probably be poking through the screen then at that point, and then I wouldn't be able to play anymore. I'd have to like go back to the other side of the room, and I don't have room for that. So be, we'd be rearranging stuff. I see a big guy. <laughs> big dum dum. He, he hit his head off of the the thing. Okay, tell me I didn't just screw this thing up way too fast. Tell me you died on that at least a few times. Tell me you had a hard time on that. Got shot put? I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's a consumable as well. You ran past it? <laughs> I killed it first try without getting hit. <laughs> Damn it. Damn. <laughs> 2023 guide on how to kill big dude that comes out of gate on... Uh, third day of Liza P. Perfectly no damage. Here we go. No, I'm joking. All right. Uh, let's see. We got shot put, which is uh, B for motivity. Can be thrown. Enemies who are hit receive significant strike damage. Can make anyone staggered. Some throwable weapons boast great destructive power on their own. When combined with the strength of puppets, nothing more needs to be said. Cool. Has no damage been done on this? I have no idea. It's only been out since September, so... It probably could have been done by now, but I haven't now checked and see. Sweeper's Branch Office newspaper, newspaper Archives. A nasty puppet has invaded our territory. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> more, more might need to be said. Uh, about what? Consumables are busted. So far for me, they haven't been that great. <clears throat> Even the arm, like the one that did the sh like the pulse, the uh, the electric explosion, that was pretty cool. All right, so we got target name unknown, affiliation sweepers, code name cat, the sweepers branch office newspaper archives. Joined the group as an apprentice stalker, but is inactive in the group. Has been reported multiple times for ignoring ranks and neglecting duty. Caught being in contact for the last last year with the Fox, a bastard stalker, under investigation for leaking inside secrets, but has not responded yet. Uh, as it is with the bastards, she is assumed to have been ousted from noble succession. 
The interesting thing is she claims that a cat is a bastard of the family, so in other words, her lost sibling. If the information above is reliable, the cat is possibly a spy from the bastards. It's an unofficial interrogation, so there are no restrictions to the methods available. Interesting. So we're going we're gonna to find an NPC that's a cat now? <laughs> it was the cat inside the hotel the whole time. It wasn't even a person in a mask, dude. The last boss is totally the cat. That's the puppet master. Alright. What are we doing over here? Oh. Another Legion magazine. I thought that was a ladder. That's a tree. <laughs> Okay, anytime we're going deeper underground, usually really bad things happen, so... Should probably get ready for that. And we got a ladder up here, too. Did we find a fox? Uh, there was a dude that was in a dog mask. I thought he was a fox at first, but I don't think so. And then we found the lady that had the, the dog mask that I'm wearing. And then we killed the donkey, which was a boss. Went the opposite way. 30 tries to beat the Parade Master. Had to work a bit at learning guards properly. Spoilers! Parade Master. I don't think I killed him yet. Uh-oh. Oh, the first boss. My bad. Okay. I forgot about... I forgot his name. <laughs> There's, like, the clock dude. I still can't remember his name. People have told me so many times. No idea. Uh, the Andreas guy. That was the last one. The other one that I killed really fast, no clue what the hell the name was. And yeah, then we're here. Scrapped Watchman, yes, okay, Scrapped Watchman was his name. Welcome to the territory of the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. Remember anyone? Wait for it to pop back up again, because the game does that. Anyone who fails to pay the protection fee on time is headed straight for the coffin. If you like this game, you should check out Bloodborne. I've heard Bloodborne's pretty damn good. I should probably check it out, you're right. Did this take me back into the city again? Or is this just like another city? Oh, I saw you go into the factory. But you're here. So, wait. You came out of the factory? That's a new one. I thought you would have been burnt to a crisp. But look at you, all intact. Brother, being too frank is rude. We should praise him for being stronger than he looks. Why not join forces? Play our cards right, and we could defeat the villains who rule this area. Not a fan of her voice actor. Yeah, the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. This is okay. The baddies who torment the residents around here. Yeah, his, his voice actor is better. We heard their hideout is stuffed with treasure. And it's a good time to liberate this place as well. Pretty sweet deal. Don't you think? Her voice is not bad at all. It's all actually really good, but the, the delivery, yeah. It's like, what That's the... It. Do, 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 the rest do, we do, can do, 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 So, you gonna do it? I'll accept the offer. I like the outfit, though. It's really cool. I would actually wear that one. Let's strength actually, both grand, of them look good. So His looks really cool, too. Smart choice. So look at our smart friend, Gato. <laughs> really enjoy We're no slouches in the fisticuffs department in a pinch. I have at you one as well. We'll bring Quality up the rear stuff. and watch for hidden threats. LaRusso, thank you so much for the three months, dude, and the Prime sub. Also, I'm glad you enjoyed those videos. There's going to be more coming out like that, too. Uh, the discussion playlist, if for anyone that liked the recent videos of the Atmosphere comparison and the Bloodborne tier list, there's a bunch more tier lists. Uh, some first impressions of games that were coming out like i think i have my elden ring first impressions and blood or demon souls when they did the remake uh when they do the dlc trailer for elden ring i'll be doing a live first impression of that too and then any kind of review of something i think armored core made it on there uh, as well as just 
just, yeah, anything where I'm just talking about something. So the next video coming out is going to be, I'm not going to tell you specifically what it means, but it's going to be the challenge run iceberg, essentially, or the hierarchy. Um, and then it's going to help people that I think are beginners that want to actually play challenge runs on the games, know exactly how to go about it without it being too frustrating, and also touch base on some of the craziest things that anybody's ever done, all in one big thing, to, to say the fewest words I can about it. So that's going to be coming out after the video for the Fat Rolling Night Level 5 plus DLC on uh, Dark Souls 1. But I, I love the Iceberg videos myself for any topic, so I think it's a cool thing and no one's done it before. Valeri, thank you for the Prime sub. I appreciate it. Enjoy your motes. Her voice actor should try Bloodborne. <laughs> I like it. Let's fight on. Oh, she wants to play Bloodborne. There we go. Are you playing Bloodborne today? I like it. Let's fight on. Okay. Am I going to win the lottery? I like it. Let's fight on. Pretty good odds. Okay. Um. Do you like? Pickle juice. I like it. Let's fight on. Okay. Um, is the puppet master super stinky? I like it. Let's fight on. That's kind of weird. I don't know if I should work with you guys anymore. <laughs> Are we always start with no hit reset runs? Oh yeah, if you're gonna do a hitless run, definitely reset for sure. Be a good idea. Ooh. Everyone knows the Puppet Master is stinky. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are. It doesn't look like it's uh, the priority to go and have a shower here. It's like we're, we're trying to just kill a bunch of zombies that have blue ooze coming out of them. Okay, now we got a squad. <clears throat> when are you going to play Lords of the Fallen? Mozart, ironically, so... I don't know if I told you about the drama behind the scenes where they had contracts ready and all these promises they made for a lot of the Souls creators on in my talent agency, and then they just pulled back, but something happened. I don't know what it is yet. I haven't gotten any info on why, but they gave me a contract last night to stream it on Sunday. So I'm going to be playing Lords of the Fallen, the new one, on Sunday for a couple hours. I might do the whole stream if I like it a lot. We'll see. And then I'll go back to it again after TwitchCon. But I want to beat this first, so... I don't think we're going to have this beaten by the end of the, the weekend. So the goal is to beat this before I go to TwitchCon. And then after TwitchCon... Do some other other stuff that I planned, and then we'll, we'll, we'll beat that game too. If it's good. So the irony actually is I will be playing it. I said that the plan wasn't to. I really wanted to, but I was like, I don't want to support them if they're going to be doing funny things. But I guess they... they had, made up for it somehow. I'm really interested in hearing the details on how that happened, too. Because I, when I saw the offer, I thought it was for the original Lords of the Fall, which is a different studio, so I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But then I clicked into this the link, and I'm like, wait a second, they didn't name it number two. It's literally the same name as the first one. Has anybody even done that before? When there's no, there's no uh, sequels? Like, literally, they made a game, and then they made another game called the same game again, without it being... A remake, remaster, it's a completely different game. Different studio as well. And they use the same name. Doom? Yeah, but Doom had sequels in between though. So it wasn't just the original Doom, and then they just made the original Doom again. It was like, Doom, Doom 1, 2, 3, whatever, and then they made Doom. So that's, that's kind of what I mean. Like, there's usually a reboot every once in a while, but with sequels in between. God of War also had sequels as well, and then they did God of War. Call of Duty also had sequels, and then they did then they did the reboot. They, I've never heard of a game do no sequels, and then they made a sequel that is a reboot without having the the sequential numbers after Whoa, or, or hold up. subtitle. It's been a while since I worked like that. I got aches, you know, and I wouldn't want to cramp your style. I'll take a breather here, then catch up later. Big baby. Trying to, trying to rest on the, the job right now. What, what is going on here? Why does he look so small? Is that just like an optical loop? Maybe my sword just looks so big. He looked like pretty tiny right there. Prey? Prey did that? Okay. 
Yeah, Mortal Kombat, there's a lot of them. Modern Warfare 3 is coming out. Oh yeah, I forgot they were doing that. That's that's next month, right? Not the decay again. Wonder if this guy's got the key. Let's go. Let's tussle. No. No. Rip the original plan for Prey 2. What's the space horror game that recently came out? Wasn't that the same? That was a uh, remake for Dead Space. But Dead Space also had a sequel, or two sequels. It had Dead Space 2 and 3, and then they did that. So even if it was a reboot, that's still technically a trilogy in between, right? <clears throat> It makes sense after a lot of time, you know, but... This is weird. I, I'm surprised they didn't just title it Lords of the Fallen 2. I guess it doesn't, um... count as, like, a continuation of the story. Hopefully. Some of the sounds they make are hilarious, man. Like, they're, they're a little too good. Like, imagine they didn't have the soundboard or some sort of sample for it, so they just had someone in a booth going like... <laughs> yeah, dude, that could have been a death metal scream. Like, right before the drop, you got some white chapel or something like that. It's just like... <laughs> I think jump through the corner of the wall. I don't know about that. Never underestimate the rage of a peasant armed with a jar of milk. <laughs> Gotta go. Good luck for the rest of the stream, Valeri. Thank you so much again for the sub. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, thank you for being here to watch some of this. We'll see you next time. Really got to go and pick up the Ergo. Weren't there four Dead Space games before the remake? Was there a fourth one? I thought there was only three. I didn't even play the, the second or the third, but I saw a little bit of them and they, they looked a lot different. I have a taste of Le Blewies, the greatest wine in the world. Le Blewies winery has a long history. Vintage wine starting alongside the revival of Krav. Its rosy color known as the Ruby of Heaven. Its delicately matured scent and taste. Its wonderful aftertaste. Even the legendary stalker enjoys Le Blewies. Taste the best wine chosen by the one who stood at the pinnacle. <sighs> Sounds like a, bo a bunch of hoopla, dude. I don't know about that. Why is anybody drinking it right now, huh? 
The Bleewees. Bleewees, okay. Do you invest in American companies more than Canadian companies, or do you just have a finance guy? I don't have anybody managing my finances, no. I've, I've had so many people try to try to do it. I've had to turn down a lot of people trying to do that. Um, but I think that's just protocol. The bank has to do that. But um, uh, I don't know, actually. I don't... I think most of the companies are American. And then there's some things that have no relevance to like where the location, like crypto, obviously. Um, but yeah, most of them are American for sure. And then some of them are actually international. Like there's one investment that I have that is in, um, I think it's in uh, Vietnam. It's like a Vietnamese thing. There's some that are in the UK as well. It, it depends on, I guess the origin, but some of the services or the, the company's products are actually relevant internationally or across seas, so. I don't really pay attention to that that too much though, like the origin of where the company is as much as the relevance of it, especially um, like anything future technology wise is kind of yet to be seen. Like we, we're gonna have to go through a lot of changes with markets anyways, but like I've kind of stopped having interest in the markets. I know that the economy and the way that everything's ran financially overall, just the, the economic structure of North America has failed at this point and there's not really a huge point in putting too much emphasis on trying to leverage it because you are at a lot of odds regardless of your intelligence um and then even so even if you do know how to make a strategy that's pretty good for investment right now it's not something that's as satisfying as it used to be in, in, in a pretty fair market or more of a fair market i guess so it it's almost like uh just probably one of the scariest places to to have money in rather than Assets specifically, some assets are still pretty scary, but assets are better. And then, um, yeah, like land obviously is, is is pretty good. And uh, if you have a a business of your own that actually has relevance as well, obviously, like investing in, in your own business is pretty good too. For yourself, investing yourself, dude. It's a big ass sword weaver. It is, dude. And it's funny because like I've, I've extended it so it can go back to a shorter form, but this form is a lot quicker. So that was going through the door over there. And then this is where we came from. I think it might be. Yeah. Getting shares in either French tech companies or German chemical companies. Are among the best bets right now. You think so? Your investment banker pseudo and most of your personal personal portfolio is made up of index funds. Your returns beat the large majority of your stock owning colleagues. Yeah, the index fund stuff definitely is like if you're like inter if if you want an introduction into investing, you usually would just get a mutual advisor. You do index funds and then you get gold or something like that. Or again, real estate, like those kinds of things. Uh, crypto is I think crypto is kind of a, a safe bet in a lot of cases, but obviously some people just don't understand where it's going to go. There's some some theories that it's going to have relevance long term, but who knows, man? Like, I think that uh, North America in general is just like a extremely doomed place. That's 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 what I understand at this point. Like, there's been a huge mismanagement of everything to the point where it's a huge cover-up now that can't continue to, to be pushed any forward any longer before a lot of the stuff is going to be disclosed to the public and the, the leaks are going to seep through the cracks and then unfortunately you're going to be like, oh man, like, I thought things were much better than they were because they want you to think it's okay, but it's really not. Everything's really bad. So I don't even I don't even stress or worry about that stuff anymore. It's just like whatever, you know. Have some things locked in long term. Uh, a lot of the short term stuff have exited, and then just worry about other things. I can't even hit you while you're on the ground. What? <laughs> I thought she was gonna get me still. 
Crypto is the victim of greed, corruption, and gross mismanagement by a handful of high-profile individuals like SBF. Who's SBF, by the way? Three people in a row would fit in that alleyway and your weapon still can't swing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it, that That's the kind of uh, the geometry where if you had a spear, you would win. And this weapon's kind of like a spear, but it doesn't really poke, though. So. Oh, the FTX guy. I see, I see. Sam Bankman Freed. The main area that links the rest of the place with the massive dude. So wait, I'm going the wrong way still, right? Because I think I... Yeah, to get to the place of the massive dude, I don't think we went this way before, did we? Basement's the dead end, okay. Oh, wait, is that a ladder? Was it this way that we were going? Up the staircase? Up here? Can't get in here, can you? So, up this staircase and then a different direction? So just not the basement specifically. Past the milk lady, and then up here. Okay, I see. A lot of your clients were exposed to crypto until SPF came crashing. Now crypto is fairly hard to push. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely weird. It's one of those things. For me, though, the way that I invest is, like, I actually don't consider the money there anymore. Like, it's already gone. Like, to me, everything is zero dollars. Like, any money I put into investing, I don't care if I get it back ever again. It doesn't matter. I still invest with some level of uh, knowledge, fundamentals, and intelligence, but I don't consider it actual money anymore. It's already gone. That's my version to a degree, especially on the higher end of risk of gambling. That's the most I've ever gambled in my life, and I'm perfectly okay with having zero dollars back just because... I don't put every single dollar into that kind of stuff. And a lot of this stuff is put into things that actually will be utilized heavily, especially with just laws and regulations with the world changing in the future, regardless of if people like it or not. So the safer plays are going to be locked in for a long time anyways. I still consider that money good as gone because I'm not going to see it anyways. I'm not going to take it out until, you know, probably 2030s or something like that, maybe even 2040 if I'm alive still, which I should be, knock on wood. The world should be going... Oh, kick, still alive and kicking at that point, so... Yeah. You know. <laughs> What's going on, Psycho? How are you doing? It's a good approach. It's, it's the best approach. I mean, also, being attached to money in general is a curse, so it's like... They kind of want you to do that. Even pe like the people that feel like they don't have enough uh, care way too much about it, and they don't... The universe doesn't grant you any benefits because then you're always putting out the message that you're in scarcity. And then the people that feel like they have almost everything or like everything that they need already without actually necessarily even on a societal perception having them will only get more things that they probably don't even still want. And then the people that have greed, that hoard, that have found certain ways to like, you know, basically just grind to be able to get those things are never fulfilled. So it's like... I've started to take the path of like realizing I, I actually do not like money at all. I think that money is a curse and it's required, unfortunately, but more so as a tool to create experiences in time. Like, so pockets of time, time efficiency, experience, and uh, to help people, but like, and also help yourself when you need it. But really, it's just evil though. So it's like, being too attached to it is also just a really low quality of life from what I've found. And I've, I've been that person to a degree. And it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's a, it's a bad life. That's all I can say. That's my experience. 
if you can somehow find a balance where uh, you love it, but then it also doesn't curse you, that's amazing. But it never brought me anything that was uh, joyful at all, other than just, uh, you know, just the right amount has been able to create some experiences that are pretty cool. But even those experiences don't out, out, outplay experiences that have nothing to do with money at all. So it's like, you know, proceed with caution. It's, a, it's somewhat of a novelty, even though there's like a structure we're, we're in that requires it. Cannon event. <laughs> What's going on, Jim? Welcome back, dude. Okay, wait, who's who's throwing the things at me here? Just trying to see if I can finally maybe get the guy that's throwing the stuff. Apparently not right now. Can't even see you. Can I hit you through the wall? It's a good attitude to have, honestly, over a long time horizon, most investments in companies with strong fundamentals pay off. Uh, did you explain the same thing a few days ago, or you're having deja vu, Whitehead? Explain what? Guy smashed you into the ground three or four times. Uh, well, I'm probably going to be on, like, the, the fifth time now. Or fourth or fifth time. <laughs> Rosie, no worries. I'm glad you enjoyed watching this. That's awesome. There, there is going to be every single VOD uploaded to the second channel as well. So when that's in the, the bot command for the social media platforms, the second YouTube account will have all the stuff that's the full playthrough that eventually won't be on, on this site anymore because it's going to like fade out after that 60-day time frame. But it'll have all the playthroughs that you want to see every bit of. Cool. And then I think we're, we've already uploaded the first part of it already, so it's already ready to go. I still don't know if I want to order Armored Core first, because that's also uploaded as well. I think I might want to go in order of how I played the things. Or in order of like how far back they've been released, just so we're not off the mark with you know timing and all that. And then um, there will be most likely something to do with this game on the main channel. I might just do like a review of it. I think it'd be really cool to do a review. Uh, that features quite a lot of the gameplay. Maybe do like a 20-30 minute written video. That'd be really nice. And then I'll feature stuff from the first playthrough on it. But then if you want to watch the whole first playthrough, it'll be on the second channel. Having a one-third life crisis. Should I really be saving for my retirement as hard as I am? Could I... I I could have so much more cash for things like improving my home and visiting my family instead of hoarding for, for retirement. You. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like, <laughs> that kind of problem right there is just kind of like why I said money's evil. It's just like you basically are in an experiment to a degree where it's like, let's just have people that break rules that don't actually play by the rules you have to play by that can leverage so much. Um, wealth and, and, and use tools that you have no access to and then try to give you a harder game to play than they have to play um, and then kind of keep it within a very small pocket so that you have to actually have problems like that and then if they are negligent they commit um, you know felonies or whatever they actually break the law constantly they can get bailed out of it con constantly as well and it can all be covered up by paying people off so that's the kind of world we live in, unfortunately. It's not actually fair in that regard. So the best thing you can do is uh, do whatever fills you the most, if that's what it is, if you think that that's a better use of it, and if it fills you, and, you, um, and you're and you just mindful of being kind of, you know, as resourceful as you can be when there is the option to, that's that's not a bad idea in my opinion, but I don't want to be telling people what to do. It's like, you, you'll, you're going to know instinctively over time if you really, like, listen to, uh, like, your, your yourself, uh, your your, your 
if you pay attention and you don't let other people kind of lead it, if you, you're like, okay, this feels the best for me, this feels right, you're gonna know. Because some of the decisions I've made that are the best, like most people told me not to do them. Like almost every good thing in my life came from not listening to like 80% of people, I would say. And not doing what 90% of people would probably do. So it's not always as simple as just asking even me. Maybe I don't even have the answer. But I would say just uh, if you can manage to do those things and that's something you really want to do, do those things. But look at all of the all of the factors that are involved. So if you go and you improve your house, if you go and uh, help your family, whatever, think of like the implications of that long term too. And if things were to change drastically, like, you know, is that something you are okay with? Or ready for if there's some curveballs? Why stream so rarely now? Is Twitch no longer your primary profession, Sudo? It hasn't been my primary profession for a long time. But um, I, I've been streaming every single day since I came back. I just took a break for a month to do the YouTube. And uh, I've been training some fitness clients, been doing a lot of skateboarding, a lot of music, been taking lessons for it as well. And uh, yeah, pretty much just like trying to spend time with family, be a regular person. But uh, yeah, I haven't done like full time streaming, I would consider as like a main thing where like it's the, the, the stress is all on always being live for a while. My goal was always to kind of exit out of that because I really like making YouTube videos more than um, doing this exclusively. I like a combination of both, but I really like making YouTube videos though. It's much more fulfilling to me um, than feeling like I have to stream versus I want to go and stream something. But yeah, I have, I've taken breaks here and there. I've talked about it before. There's no, there's no reason where there was, there was anything bad happening. It was actually like probably the best decision I made and I'm super happy about it. I wouldn't change a single thing I did. And I've only been better because of that. But when I am streaming a lot, though, it's because I really, really want to. It's not necessarily because I, I have to or anything. And if it ever becomes a thing where maybe that's the number one thing I do, just organically, that's amazing. But this platform's changed a lot. And it's not a, it's not like the most fair in terms of, like, being lucrative to people the way it used to based on their actual effort they put in. Because there's some streamers that work really hard. But they were never given the chance, like I said, to have the premium contracts way back in the day unless they just heard from somebody. Oh man, I keep getting lost. Left on the staircase in the room with the lady with the milk jug. Yeah, there's a lot of secrets and stuff like that. So I got lucky because someone told me about the premium contract way back. But if I didn't know that, I would have been getting um, a significant percentage off my pay for doing the same thing as somebody else. And then it got to the point where now, then you couldn't get it for a while. And now you can only just get it if you meet a requirement that other people didn't have to meet to get it originally. And a lot of it all has to do with just... Um, their actual ability to be able to get money from advertisers. There's not as many advertisers that necessarily want to be involved as maybe Google, for example. So there's not as much ad revenue to be able to give, not about enough revenue to share for subscriptions and stuff. They can't justify it to run the platform as much. And that's just based on the management of the platform. It could be because there's things we don't know where they're compet and like they're, they, there's a huge chance the competition, for example, YouTube doesn't put more resources into streaming because they know that there's a problem with that. And it might not even be their fault, but it's just it's just something that's declined quite a bit. So, um, yeah, and there's going to be people that are hyper like performers on this platform where even if they had like 50% of their pay taken, it doesn't really matter. At this point, they could have already retired if they wanted to. But then there's people that just do this and they they put in the same amount of time, but they're just not as popular out there based on their niche and they're not going to necessarily have that opportunity it's going to hurt them a lot so they better diversify and i diversified a long time ago so like i already reaped the benefits of that before i actually stopped doing full-time streams and now i think a lot of people are starting to realize oh i have to have a youtube channel that has to be more of the priority um missed opportunity right or i have to do instagram to get other types of endorsements and stuff like that, or I have to do these other things. Like, why, why aren't I doing those things? And then you, you'll see even YouTubers, like, just specifically making Patreons and having join buttons and all that, and then that helps support their content because maybe the algorithm doesn't favor or the system doesn't favor them as monetizable at the same rate as someone else. There's so many different variables, so 
think the more things you can try out and see what they work, the better. But just doing this full time is, is, is extremely difficult. It's one of the most difficult things I think I could ever imagine doing. You'd have much better luck going to university, just getting a degree. To be honest, it'd be way easier. Especially from square one at this point. Can't move, dude. Dude, this guy's hard to kill. Do I do you have to use Instagram though? No, you don't have to do any of these things. I'm just saying it's a smart idea if you want to do full-time content. So you'll notice actually, even with YouTube, a lot of YouTubers have two or three channels. Uh, a lot of people I know too, they have channels that you don't even know about. Like they do other content and stuff. They don't just do what you know them for so they'll have like a like there's even people that have careers where they get in, there's a guy that i used to watch um for skating content he skateboards but then he also does landscaping content that's related to his job but then he also is a landscaper so he has three different things that he does and then there's people that will do like um there's there's someone that i know that uh, also does skating content but he does tech content like computer programming and hardware um you know review and stuff and amazon product reviews and stuff um, for me, like I did everything on one channel, but now I'm starting to branch out where I'm going to have the music channel made. So all the music is going to go there. And then there's going to be a second channel for VOD content to supplement this and edited content. So that's three, three YouTube channels. Um, in the end, the TikTok, Instagram will just be for fun, but there might be a second Instagram for music. And then, you know, it's the master plan. So, um, you're covering all bases. There's no blind spots and you'll probably have to hire people to help you run some of the stuff. And there's not going to be a way to put time into all of it full full force, but it, sh it should be good though. Especially if you, have, if you have other interests, like you should be considering those things. And they don't even have to perform that well, but as long as you have like a couple main things that are doing pretty good, then it's all right. Okay, I I really don't know how can get this dude up here to not throw the things. I think I'm going to have to wait for this guy to walk over. I'm getting cornered, though. Patience Amulet. That's kind of what we had to have to beat him. That's a really good name. Twitch is for tub girls now. Oh yeah, the hot tub streams. That's another thing too. Like if you have a platform that's for gaming and then you start to get like other categories, maybe not even bad ones like music and stuff like that, art. Um, you know, it's, it's also something that's difficult too because you're giving those people the same types of um, encoding options and channel priority as other people that do the gaming, which is like the biggest thing obviously that keeps it going. But a lot of people struggle to do music on this platform and art, for example, um, as well as a lot of other things. Then there's people that do just chatting that never played a game once and they outperform like most of the people that play games. So it's a really weird um, variety of things going on. And yeah, I don't know. With, with the way they make decisions on this, this platform, we don't really know where they come from sometimes. Some of them are really weird. But I think the biggest thing is they don't have the power to be able to get as many advertisers on board as Google would for their videos on demand for YouTube specifically. And if they could have that type of power, they could afford to never have not had a premium contract for everybody that meets like a very small requirement and keep it permanently. And they also could have incentivized more people to even put more time in and work harder and give more tools like the creator studio tools they have on YouTube to help you actually be a more successful content creator. So you, you cover all the blind spots. That's it's really yeah it's it's something to do with um like w how much they can afford to really give but when amazon originally bought this platform they did some cool stuff to it it, it got way better in my opinion and then now it's like i don't know <laughs> it's different 
Ooh. Got the balance crank. Nice. I don't know if I have one of those. One year into COVID, Twitch massively fell for years of viewer. You really liked it before 2020. It was definitely different before 2020. But there's like these little seasons it goes in where it's 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 continued to keep progressing in different ways, right? So even before, I'd say, I'd say 2014 when I was watching as a viewer, it was extremely different to the point of when they bought it or when Amazon bought it. And then two years after that, it changed again. And then it changed again another couple of years, other few years. But then you still see people that are pretty consistent throughout all of that from the very beginning. And um, I think that they are the ones that will benefit the most. Like if you were a legacy user that made content that were super successful already before things changed, there's a certain level of success where it's it's actually impervious or invincible to any changes because you just have such a dominant force over the market that you're, you're, even with algorithms and everything, they can't affect you because you can do anything you want since you already have the attention. Whereas trying to gain attention in changing algorithms, changing landscapes, becomes like 20 times harder. So I was talking to my editor about this. I was asking him for some tips because he edits for Markiplier. And I was like, what, did, what would Mark do in this situation and that? And he's like, well, it doesn't really like work the same for Mark. He has different rules, right? Because he was already successful before all this stuff. So he doesn't have to worry about all the stuff that someone that's more like that's newer to it would, especially if they're starting right now. It's a different, it's a different ball game. Um, of course, it helps to you know still optimize stuff, but the optimization's not nearly as um, important at all. You know, same thing with like Moist Critical. Moist Critical dominates YouTube. He doesn't have to worry about half the shit I have to worry about, even though we're both technically, to some extent, gaming creators. And I could make the same content he does. I could have a compelling view on something that's good, but I'll have to consider so many other variables. Um, because I wasn't doing it before these systems started dominating. So that might be one thing to consider if you ever get into anything. Never, never not try something because you never know. You might stick with it for the long term and you might be one of the OGs that really like sets the standard for something. But you can you can just do a lot of cool shit that really fulfills you that other people have to, you know, unfortunately tread carefully with. Uh, semantic, no worries, dude. Thank you very much, dude. I hope you have a good rest of your time. The rest of your day. Transformation is sick. This weapon's really cool. Oh, is it gonna be the the riddle guy again? Another fine day in the city no. of Krog, but I wonder, my friend, just oh, it is. where you've been? Oh. <laughs> I hope my return isn't too unexpected. It seems that our fates may be interconnected. Now, do pay attention. You won't want to miss when the king of all riddles says, Riddle me this. <clears throat> I stand tall and proud when I'm young and bold, but I'm short and humble once I've gotten old. What am I? you cheat? Are you cheating? Better not be cheating. You are irritatingly good at this. Or am I? Oh, impossible. I am the king of riddles and you are just, Impossible. Well, you. <laughs> no offense. You're either very lucky, improbably bright, or more likely you're cheating. That's not even true. That was such an easy one. Anyone could guess that. A, a baby would guess that. Is still an acceptable method of solving dispute. That was a terrible I'm riddle. The other one was way, way better. The first one. You know, I wonder. Perhaps it's your connection to Candle. Because the answer is right. God, you get it. But you're not feeling violent. Huh. Even better. It's as good a time as any to grant you this boon. Now, take your new key and say, give me some room. I can tell you're enjoying these times that we spar. I take leave of you <laughs> Sparring. Now, but don't go too far. Hey, you want to have a duel on the phone, dude? 1v1, 1v1 over the, the telephone? Trinity key, nice, nice. 
And that's gonna give us the door at the Stargazer, I guess. Oh, there's a lot of rooftop items over here. I guess we're gonna go through that area again, but let's let's check out this one right here. What we got over this way. Some good voice acting. He has a really good voice actor. I like his. It kind of reminds me of the Joker a little bit. A little bit less weird, but similar, similar cadence. Ooh. Or Jack from Bo Jack from Borderlands, hundred percent. Yes, even more Jack from Borderlands. Oh, that was really. <laughs> he looked like he was falling, trying to get his balance back, and falling out on the, into the dog at the same time. That was funny. Do you agree, uh, Arlecchino, Arlecchino? Is that how you say his name? Arlecchino's well written. There's a lot of stuff that's well written. Like the bad voice acting's few and far between. But I don't. I wouldn't even blame the people actually reading the scripts. Just some of the way they they wrote it might have been harder for them to do. And then they they could have had instruction with how to deliver it. That just wasn't the greatest. Um, because like. Some of it does feel more like they're reading it from paper rather than actually, like, living the situation. And then other ones, it's like, I can believe that's a person. Okay, I'm not sure how far away we're going from the other area. Maybe we should have gone back and done that first. This seems like progression. So let me let me go backtrack a little bit, see if I can get those items on the rooftops. And then we will continue this part. Oh wait. This is the right way, almost to a shortcut. Okay. Is it the same place? What's the game looks so cool you can't see the name on your phone, Alaith? This is Lies of P. If you go back, you will out the front of the red lobster at the gazer. Wait, what? <laughs> this thing? You will out the front of the red lobster at the gazer. Oh, where I stepped in the bear trap. Oh, okay. Okay, we're back here anyways. This is perfect. <laughs> Ooh, right in the ankles. See, I wouldn't have been able to get that if it wasn't transformed. Who's P and Y Z lying? Uh, it'd be my character. And then, uh, I, I don't know, there's been some instances where you, you get the chance to tell somebody the truth or a lie. And some of them have been pretty funny. I think I've only lied once in this playthrough. But I don't know if I could have continued it if I didn't, though. I wasn't... Like, if I could have said the truth for the beginning and still progressed, then I would have done that. But I wasn't sure, though. I was like, hmm, maybe they won't let me in the hotel. Do a no-hotel run. I think our upgrade level for this weapon is starting to show a little bit. Let me check and see if I got any other materials that I picked up, maybe. Got more quartz, which is good, so I got another ability soon. And we did get the Dark Moon Moonstone. So then, yeah, we can get plus two at least. That's good. Got some Crescent, got some Hidden. Then we got that Balance Crank. Is this a Souls-like? It is, yeah. It's heavily inspired by Bloodborne, from what I understand. But it also, it has like a Bioshock vibe to it. And then a lot of Italian influence for sure.
that goes right back into here. Okay, so. Hmm. Like, while we're here, do I want to go back here and then leave and come and then, like, clear everything again? I'm trying to think of progression. I should get the ergo I lost. Okay, let's do, like, a loop. Do the gate again. There's still that other door, too. It's at the beginning. You hit 170 kilogram deadlift PR. What do you think? I know you're like my gym guy. <laughs> um, 170 kilogram deadlift PR is crazy, dude. That's uh, <laughs> dude, that's like. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, it's what like 370 pounds, something like that. More than 370 pounds? 375, yeah. That's crazy, dude. Like, if you're also just kind of, you know, in your, in your first, I would say, five years of training as well, that's really decent. If you haven't been deadlifting long as well. I don't... The thing with me, though, is, like, I'm not really a power lifter, so I don't know <laughs> what would... Like, some people might be like, oh, that's shitty or something like that. They might have a standard where they compare against, like someone that is just built to do that but for me i would say if i could deadlift uh about 375 that would be that'd be decent especially for reps too be nuts dude i don't think i've even tried doing that i've tried uh i tried more than body weight before but not by a lot and that was more for reps i never tried a one rep max for almost anything playing motivity or balance primarily i'm playing motivity on this character but yeah, the, the thing is, what I would say for anything regarding strength or fitness or health or whatever, like, kind of base it off of your, your own standards. So if you if you were working hard to improve and you improved in general in any way, that's already better than trying to um, adhere to a standard that other people might think is just a, a, a agreed upon good number to hit because that number to you might be doing the work to your body that twice the number is for somebody else. So just remember that the benefits you're going to be getting are still realized regardless of like a metric number shouldn't really dictate your uh, your benefits when it comes to fitness. As long as you're pushing yourself. But yeah, it's always good to add to that, too. That's that's cool. I'm trying to think of where I died before. And also, there's a lot of stuff on these rooftops. I need to get to these guys. Oh, right there. There we go. Okay, now we got to be very careful because I don't want to die again with almost 5k here that's some levels right there 95 i'm doing good dude how are you a number in a vacuum is difficult to compare no one can say 375 is a low weight yeah exactly that's well 375 automatically is like it's it's almost two humans right there that are like fully grown that are they're relatively like i would say like heavy ish you know that's or hmm yeah that's well, in kilograms, let me think, 340. Yeah, no, that's like legitimately like two humans, dude, two, two adults. <sighs> Probably two of you. I don't know how much you weigh, but that's like, that's a lot. Uh, Relian, thank you so much for the brand new sub. I appreciate that. I hope you enjoy your modes, man. Damn bud, great lift. You see, like, yeah, every, everyone's giving you some hype for that. That's that's, it's impressive. All right, where are we going to get on the roof of the other part? Because that led me back in here. There's got to be another ladder or something. How do I get out there? There's a chest there, too. We're gonna figure this out.
Oh, that might be it. I think that is it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna let you chill down there for a little bit because I want these items. Oh, come, of course. Of course, come on. They always gotta do that. Jammer, what's up? How's it going, dude? How'd you like the bear? The one that was in the forest? Or maybe maybe that's a spoiler. Your heart's beating out of your chest like crazy, you just beat Gwen. Jammer, nice dude. You're saying the best attempt was 50%. Uh, that was yesterday or the day before, right? Congrats, dude. Is that the first time you beat him? Or were you doing like a particular type of playthrough? Got him to a quarter of health yesterday. Oh, the bear from the forest. Yeah, that was that was interesting, but the guy that had uh, busted through the gate that just like jumps at you, he is scary. That's the scariest enemy so far. By far. Like, I'd say it'd be almost a tie between him and the shield dude, but because he can keep jumping with those red attacks from really far, that's just scary. And his, his range is just, like, just ridiculous, man. First from soft game you've ever beat. That's a really good one to start with, in my opinion. Like Dark Souls one solo, especially that's that's no joke. My my question would be, how many times did you fall off of ledges? <laughs> how many gravity deaths overall? Was there a lot? Bone cutting saw blade and bone cutting handle. Ooh, that might be better. 170 plus 60, we got 152 plus 65. Charge pulse cells goes up, and then fable charge goes up too. By let's see, let's see. Uh, almost three points. Two point is it two point seven? Two point seven, and then we got eh, forty gain on the fable charge. And then how heavy is it? Twenty point seven, lighter too. This is the thing that the donkey had, right? Or no, 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 no. Wait, there's another enemy that had this. This was, um, was it the, the Atoned that had this one? Someone, someone had this weapon, I'm pretty sure. Is it the donkey weapon? Is it the one that looks like a great sword? Okay, well, that's cool. I'm going to actually upgrade that too. We'll switch around with that. <laughs> dude, there's, there's always something here. And then, of course, that breaks, too. That's that's crazy, dude. Something that FromSoft needs to learn or adapt from Liza B. Uh, I don't know. I think they're pretty good at what they do already, but... Hmm. Well, the one thing I was saying that would be a huge advantage, if they make their next game in Unreal Engine, they would be... Not only just one of the best games, they, they could have Game of the Year, but they could also have one of the best looking games of all time, too, at the same time. So that's never something they've really been able to do. They've always had a style that's specific. And with the limitations that they have uh, using those styles, they still make them very memorable and cohesive. But if they could make it super realistic and have a particular style and also have the best gameplay, that's just... that That's, like, ridiculous right there. So I think Unreal Engine 5 would be a good fit for their next game. I'm sure anyone would say that, though, no matter what. It might make it a little bit more demanding for hardware, but one thing that they uh, they did, I think they released Elden Ring on PS4, didn't they? So they might have to cut out the, the previous console generation at that point. Or, like, greatly make, you know, make almost two different versions. Oh, that was a poke attack. How did I do that? Oh, just tapping R2 does the poke. I was saying there was no attack that was like a spear, but there is. Unreal Engine 5 and Sekiro 2. There you go. Whoa. 
Whoa. Whoa. What's that? What are we doing over here? kind of tempted to go and get the Stargazer. Just so I can level with that 6k, because if we don't make it back here again, that's, that's not good. It's probably been the hardest area so far. Will there be a Sekiro 2? Uh, I wouldn't think there would be one, but who knows, man. Think of it this way, like Miyazaki does not like making sequels. He said that explicitly. Uh, the only sequel he's ever been involved in was Dark Souls 3, and I think it was because he saw potential to end the, the series on a good note, since the second one couldn't live up to the expectations that it set the standard for originally. Um, it, not that it was bad, but like they actually had to, um, unfortunately, apologize for it, because they, they made it much better, and then they had to take away a bunch of stuff. So I think that was his version of just like finishing it off strong. Um, and other than that, he's never made a sequel, as far as I know. At least for um, the Souls games. And then if you think of it every single time he makes a new IP, it usually goes astronomical in terms of the success. And then it also gives a lot of promise for future projects because he's going to learn some new stuff. He's going to try a different setting. Something's going to be different enough where it actually um, pays in some sort of benefit. So I would rather not see a Sakura 2 personally, but I'd rather see them what they, you know, what they can actually learn from the first one and then incorporate that. favorite boss fight spoiler oh look at this i thought there were no more survivors <clears throat> but you the black market trader you're new i do love a bit of commerce but the bosses are really strict about who i'm allowed to sell to are you with the black rabbit brotherhood huh. i like your honesty kid but you should know that if you're not one of us the bosses will feed you to the monsters. If you, uh, give me a little something... Just show me your sincerity. I don't know what's gonna happen if I give him the Radiant, but I'm just gonna go with it. Oh, I completely forgot. You must be new, eh? Go ahead and take a look. Let's keep this between us, eh? I have a feeling that he might have said no if I gave him the smaller one. And then you'd, you'd still have to give him the other one anyways, and you'd waste more of the Ergo. Bramble curved sword blade. It's C in both technique and motivity. Someday, record playtime. A record that can be discovered in crowd can be used with the gramophone in the hotel. <sighs> Definitely want to buy that. That's cool. The arc shark. Sorry, arc shock cartridge. Say arc shock cartridge ten times in a row. Cluster grenade. It's got a lot of throwables. It's got more of the shot puts as well. They're kind of expensive though, so I mean, like these these consumables must be pretty good. And then there's an acid abrasive. It's interesting. Uh, I don't know. What's the handle do on this? Slashes enemies in front of you multiple times. Holding it down the attack button will keep attacking, and after a certain time, it will trigger a strong finisher. I'm going to get this just to use the handle, see if it's worth it. And then we'll get the gramophone record. And I'll get one of the acid abrasives as well. The snowflakes shining white in the night sky comfort me as I wait for you alone in the dark. Waiting for a departed lover, someday singing of yearning far enough to reach the stars. 
That's a really, really cool design on the actual record right there. I like that font. That's cool. With the umbrella too. Mary Poppins vibes. Someday is a bop, I can imagine. I, I want to listen to it. I hope it plays throughout the whole, whole hotel so you can still like upgrade stuff while listening to it. Like it'd be kinda kind of annoying if they made you actually just sit there and listen to it, but. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, it's a shortcut again. This place is like a maze, but it kind of all comes back to this central area here. <laughs> the fact that extends twice. Dude, even the poke can't even get him in this hallway. Oh, man. Good thing I hit the, the site there. Are those zombies? They kind of look like them, yeah. Do I have plans of speedrunning this game or any other kind of runs of Festus? Not right now. No, I'm just playing it, but we'll see in the future. There's just a lot of stuff. That's all I can say. There's a lot of stuff coming out. A lot of stuff that I already plan to do. And with the way that I do things, I typically have this, like, sweet like there's like a grace period where for like a certain amount of weeks after something comes out that it would be tempting but if i don't do it soon enough like something else will take that amount of um desire or inspiration and it'll replace it so it's like i might never do another run on this i might just play it once but that doesn't mean i don't like the game um but it's very rare for me to ever go back to something old and then go do a run on that it's usually unless it's something that's like my absolute favorite of all time and you'd, you'd typically not even see that as much, even on some of the Souls games, I wouldn't do that as much. It'd only be on so some of them, right? Um, and then, depending on if there's an event, if there's like a tournament for this game or something like that, maybe I would do that. I would really like to though, just um, with all the other things I have planned, I'm not sure if it'll happen, we'll see. It takes a, a lot of practice to, to do runs that are good. And I wouldn't want to take up all the stream time just practicing runs either. I'd want to just do runs I can do right away just by doing them once. And then all the practice time that I have goes into level one Hitless Elden Ring. So I, I planned to do that for a while. And it's already almost laid out for me because I've already done the All Remembrances, right? So I'd say that's more important right now. But just because I already want to do it. Oh. Yeah, I'd love to, though. Shoot Platinum DS1. That's up to you if you like doing that kind of stuff. I think it's a pretty cool Platinum, but you have to do, I think, two and a half playthroughs or so. Definitely more fun than the Platinum for DS2, in my opinion. Oh, I actually got him while he was on the ground. Nice. That was the first time I noticed that worked. Valerie, you think Elden Ring's the easiest for you? Yes, I am. To, like for our first playthrough? Or just in general? Work on a platinum for DS2. It's a pain in the ass. It is, yeah. And then the farming on DS3 is pretty bad too. The, the Concords on the Silver Knights. It's either like 14 plus playthroughs or you just literally sit there for an unknown amount of time. I was going to finish Frigid Outskirts tonight, but you're not feeling it. <laughs> Frigid Outskirts takes a different type of will and determination, man. I'm going to go back and do that at some point, too. I think the run that we do for DS2 is going to be an all-bosses run. Because I was saying I want to do challenge runs for each game. To, to get back into them, then I'm going to actually learn a speed run with glitches that's not super competitive, but just good enough for my pace 
and do a marathon of all of them back to back where there's no resets and try to get a time of around 12 hours for all seven games by the end of the year. So um, the, the run I might introduce myself with DS2 would be uh, all bosses because that's something I haven't done in a long time. Might also do all NG memories on Sekiro as well, but it's also been a while. I think I only did that once before. At, at least Immortal 7s. At the very least Immortal 7s, for sure. And the year's coming fast? It is, man. What was the game that made you a gamer? For you, it was Bloodborne. Uh, maybe a game. Uh, well, it depends. Like, do you mean first game I ever actually owned, or do you mean something that I enjoyed like a lot, where I was like addicted to it? this way you're born a gamer <laughs> Kingsfield I didn't know about Kingsfield existing until like maybe four years ago first game I loved uh, Banjo Kazooie for sure actually you know what no no not even Banjo Kazooie Mega Man X was the first one I loved I will say these dogs are way worse than any other dogs. For sure. We already did this part though, didn't we? Yeah. Donkey Kong Country 2 would be such a good first game, but that's a hard game though. Donkey Kong Country is really hard. Your profile pic on Twitch is actually from Banjo-Kazooie. That's amazing, man. Yeah, I've beaten the first one multiple times, 100%. And then second one, I think I beat once. Uh, I don't think I got 100% on it, but that one was pretty good, too. And then I played Nuts and Bolts as well. I actually enjoyed Nuts and Bolts. I saw someone was... They were redoing the game in Unreal Engine, and it looked amazing. Is it this way? Are these all just ways that are going to lead back to that same Looking spot? Good. Oh, here we go. Who'd have thought we'd make it this far? You've got all kinds of skills. Hey, everything went smooth as silk. And you know me, I don't impress easy. Sure, but I gotta ask, you really gonna take on the Black Rabbit Brotherhood by yourself? Of course I am. Oh, they're over there. <laughs> Look at that pose. It's like, get, get, a, get a take on the Black, Black Rabbit Brotherhood by yourself. Ooh. <laughs> Smug. The guy that was sitting on the floor was asking me, are you sure if you're going to do it? That's, that's the funniest part. The guy that took a break before we were even done. All right, well, this is definitely not a good look to go in here with because we don't have any any of the uh, the vials. Is there another shortcut that goes right back to a gazer? I'm probably going to want to put plus two this weapon anyway, so let's... Okay, I'm just going to remember where I went through from here. So we went through that other door. When you come in, it's the one on the right from there. Down the stairs. Right, okay. The song playing in here is really good. Love this game, you know? I'm glad you liked it.
Also, how have you been, by the way? Hot skin, what's up, dude? Ready to listen to some gramophone? Oh, it's a bunch of records. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is like a whole album, dude. Oh, it does play while you walk around. That's really cool. That is an amazing feature. You know that stalk? Wow. I, I didn't know he was still alive. Thank heavens. I haven't seen him in person. And I don't know how I'd react. I missed the best song. The I'll have to go back and get life. more of them. <laughs> I'm so glad that someone so kind has reached safety. And speaking of safety, please take care of yourself out there. You're not the only one who's curious. Most people get around to asking where I'm from. My looks give it away, don't they? Suffice it to say, I'm from the country of the morning. I never asked that ocean. question. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't be much of a tour guide. All I know about it is their weapons. My family was a house of weapon specialists. It's quite a reputation to live up to. They almost took charge of planning for the grand exhibition. But that's their reputation, not mine. And they deserted me when I was little. I don't even know who they are. Stupid parents. And my reputation is my own. I suppose my only connection to them would be weapons. So I'm an orphan, and that hardly makes me exotic and crot. Can I help you with anything Stupid else? Stupid mom and dad, dude. Leaving you, Jeannie. I'm gonna find them, I'm gonna break their ankles. What is this thing? Acid Crystal Spear Blade. Did I already look at that? It's an A in advance, yeah. I think okay, I did actually check that one out, yeah. So this one, this one's interesting. Is this regular upgrade? R regular hidden moonstone, yeah. And then we can add one upgrade to this right now too. So we're gonna do that immediately. And plus two, and then we'll see how far we can get the bone cutting saw blade. Not bad, dude. Plus five on that immediately right off the bat. Not bad. I'll use one, I guess. Play it safe. I was going to buy some other stuff too, but we might as well. Nah, we have a lot of items. I'm gonna still, I have this this idea that I'm gonna need to power level at some point, so I wanna save all the resources for that. And then, for this blade, this blade is really cool. Or no, sorry, it was this one that was really cool. This one had the Furious Slash. Strong downward blow, use an extra Fable Saw for another downward strike. So I wanna put the handle from the Bramble Sword on the Bone Cutting Saw Blade. Right away. Then we could alter the handle too. I don't know if that would matter at this point. I have one motivity crank, so it'd make it from C to B for the handle. Sounds like a really good combination there. Uh, let's pop more of these then. And then I can also use the, uh, the quartz to get another ability too. That'd make the motivity A if I use the original handle, though. That's that's pretty wild. Hmm. I feel like this one would make the weapon heavier, though. By quite a bit. Damage reduction one guarding is actually pretty good, too. It's almost the same as the... The, the pipe wrench and the holy sword. Oh, I still need more Orgo, damn it. This song sounds like it could be an anime, a French anime intro. I know my way. 
something like that. I guess we'll see how good this is. We got a B scaling. Does quite a bit of damage, dude. 227 plus 67, 228 plus 65. Yeah. Similar to the uh, the pipe wrench. Oh, wait, let's get the Quartz as well. Play Lords of the Fallen, Terramil. I actually am going to be on Sunday for two hours. They, they uh, again, I don't know if I told you about the drama going on with the, the publisher or, or whoever represents them in my, my agency, but um, I think that they somehow cleared up the, uh, the air and they offered me a contract for Sunday to play it for a couple hours. A sponsor, so we will be checking it out, and then I'll, I might continue it after that. We'll see. I probably will play it after that. Just I don't know when. Oh, the assembly didn't didn't activate. Damn it! I gotta press X, right? Okay, so increase staggerable window. Yes, let's do that. Lower damage when dodging is pretty cool. I don't know if that would matter too much though. I don't really dodge inaccurately more so than I just don't even dodge and just get hit anyways. <laughs> Lowers charge attack stamina consumption could be really good. And then Perfect Guard Fable enhances good too. Those are probably my two top ones so far. Up and durability doesn't imagine too much for me. And then Legion Magazine doesn't matter. Ergo Increase is cool too. I'm going to do the, um, the lowers of charge attack stamina. Cool. We got these ones unlocked. Rising dodge. Enables dodging when on the ground. So from a wake up. Increases the maximum amount of pulse cell uses. That's cool. I like that. Add amulet slot. Ooh. I'm going to go for that one next. Retain guard regain. I, I don't really use that too much on purpose. So that doesn't matter too much. All right, that was cool. I like the song. Ooh. Imagine taking fall damage inside here. I know my way around. Cool. There we go. And now we're using the quicker saw blade. With the ability that does the Furious Slash, that might be really, really good. Might be much better than the one we were using already, we'll see. <sighs> and then amulets, do I have any better ones now? These are so heavy. Ooh. Yeah, the Patience Amulet, I might want. Stamina Recovery Speed, definitely, yep. going on uh cario game is going good how are you we've been playing this in a for a total of i would say 13 and a half hour no sorry 14 hours of playtime. i think at this point roughly between the beginning till now on day three we're in the malum district apparently i'm going to do a boss fight coming up here just made it to one i don't know what it is Gonna play along on NG Plus, you know? Alright, let's see who beats it first. If I beat it before you do on NG Plus, you need to go back and reset the game completely. Didn't know you play guitar. Good stuff on Instagram. Couldn't do much finger style at all. You're impressed, Terramel? I appreciate it. Thanks, man. I actually I just got into doing the classical guitar more recently. I was always more of like a like a lead guitar player on electric guitar with a pick, so coming from like metal and progressive rock and all that, it's very, very similar in terms of like song structure, like tonalities and all that for some of the songs, but the actual execution is very different. And even like I've noticed my left hand strength has increased so much 
because I have to hold positions for much longer and use efficiency. So, like shifting um, the voicings of things while still uh, anchoring the uh, the root uh, rhythms and or the yeah like the underlying rhythms for the bassier tones. Like that's very very hard on your left hand if you're used to just like playing scales and then chords infrequently. Uh, so that's been an interesting series of events but i think i got to the point now where i'm comfortable learning anything i really want to learn that's within an intermediate range uh, now i'm really working on just becoming like a somewhat of a jazz musician through my lessons and then from there writing jazz music or jazz fusion specifically um back when i go to the electric guitar jazz fusion something i've always wanted to like write really well so that'll be the goal on electric guitar on the nylon and steel string like actual classic compositions being played intelligently and also being able to sight read music for like moderate pieces without actually using tablature or my ear that'd be really cool so that, that's like the end goal for everything and i'll be i'll be very happy so when we come in here it was the this side Oh, no, no, no. It was like the one that we were going up. No. This weapon's pretty good. Love that weapon, cat. This weapon looks so cool. It's like the the meat cleaver or the butcher's knife from Dark Souls, but with like an actual saw blade and the the little bracket for it. It's cool. I like the details on it. Actually, a lot of the weapons have good detail. The rust is looking good. It's got a little like little pieces of gold on it too. There's a goth Melina and Liza P. There's like a blue-haired Melina. I don't know if she should be considered goth. <laughs> um, same here, you're developing your technique for five years now, just with the pick. Hard instrument, you have a soft spot for finger style, style too with jazz and classical and blues. Oh, definitely, man. Yeah, I think that for me, it's because I like the piano as an instrument a lot. In terms of listening to music, um, hearing piano for me, if, we're, if, if it's just a solo piece, is the most satisfying. Um, but in terms of playing, um, Playing stuff like you play on a piano on a guitar is the coolest stuff for me. So you get like, you know, multiple instruments at the same time. Oh, we got Black Rabbit Gang coming up here. Solaire, discount Solaire. <laughs> Have you been doing just instrumentals? Or are you working on vocals also? Um, like I sing for fun. I can sing, but like I just, I've never done an actual like cover with singing my goal ultimately was to um take my old covers that i played guitar on and play the drums on those songs and make like a multi like a one-man band kind of take on it closest i've done to that was the final fantasy uh transposition i did from the the final Bring fantasy 7 intro you ain't seen nothing like my but yeah i'm gonna be getting electric drums and then doing that kind of stuff so maybe i'll add vocals in at some point if i feel like it would, wouldn't be doing it justice for a lot of the vocalists I like because they're just like world class, right? But maybe for like mild vocals. Eldest of the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. Oh, he's got like a dude. Guy's got like the cloud sword. He is. That charge attack is is really slow on this, by the way. Imagine not stopping your attack for anything, ever. Victor Wooten's an amazing bassist. He's one of the best for sure. Moonlight Sonata Movement Three. Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, I've, I know. I'm, for, I'm pretty familiar with all the Moonlight Sonata parts. Um, that is one of the craziest things. Definitely much different than Movement One. That's that's for sure. Uh, I'm like. Uh, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Terega. Terega is something that I'm very, very drawn to. 
with uh, the, the guitar. Not Melina, Millennia. Oh, Millennia, my bad. Spoiler! I didn't know that, now I do. My life's over. <laughs> yeah, sorry for, I always, I confuse their names sometimes. Because there's people that came in chat and they would say Melina, is it, but they were they meant mo Millennia, and then vice versa, and I, was, I just got used to seeing that a lot. SWAT dog, how have you been, dude? Hey, what's the big idea leaving us behind? Oh, I knew we shouldn't trust them. Let's get out of here and get those lousy bums the business. Oh, it's like a black fog gate there. Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing. Oh, like what? Oh, sorry. I thought it was a multi fight just because I saw the guys in the background. I didn't notice that first. I knew they were up there, but I didn't see them going up there originally. Oh my god. Big damage, dude. Huge damage. Just gonna waste these. Let's see what we can do. Let's be a little cheesy here. Oh, they jump in. They definitely jump in, dude. Knock him out, bro. Bro, knock him out. Oh. That charge attack takes so long. I don't know about that. Not sure if I like this weapon more. Come on. You played nice with the others. Don't you want to play with me, Mr. Puppet? Is he going to plunge me? Let's see how good the plus two version is of this. Much better on uh, quick charge attacks, for sure. I don't know if the damage will be better, though. This guy reminds me of the spear guy in Sekiro when you're in Harada. Yeah, that damage though with the, the butcher's knife was just ridiculous. Oh, I should have just parried that one. I kind of knew it at that point. Oi, bro, you laughing at my brother? I'll fucking shite you, bro. <laughs> Shinobi Hunter. What's going on, uh, Oblivion? How are you doing? Using the same weapon as you, Mushu? The Holy Sword or the, uh, the Butcher Knife one? I started off the fight with this. The Bone Cutting Saw Blade. It's hard to say, though, if, like, because the ability was better. To a degree, it's just a very slow charge attack, so it doesn't seem like it's going to capitalize as much in the fight. I, I want to almost carry both, but I don't know. Holy Sword, you played with it till the end. It's the best looking weapon so far, I can say that much. And I really like the ability it has. Can you block attacks or parry? Yeah, you can do both, but blocking takes damage through it, and then you can regain some health if you attack immediately after. And you can also uh, parry as well. So I did parry some of them. Or it's kind of like uh, d deflex in Sekiro, where you just time the block and it deflects. 
resulting in no damage taken, but then it also it takes away from a posture meter that's invisible that builds into a stagger. So you don't actually see it on the screen, but the more you parry in succession, the closer you are to staggering. Which is pretty Bring cool. You ain't seen nothing I want to see if I can just, like, get him down in health really quickly. <laughs> Not looking good in the start here. Gonna be so much fun. Oh, I'll, I'll hit you with some Y attacks. Don't even start with me. You don't even want that smoke. I'll interrupt your red. I don't care. You don't even know where you're going. You're a junior. I'm hitting both you guys and I can't even see the other dude. That's off the screen. That's how long my weapon is. Fear of the Almighty Spear of the Dog here. God. Okay, maybe I should fear you. That's that's a little, a little bit of a turn of the tables. Oh, I could actually backstab this one. Unless it glitched out there. Oh no! Knock him out, bro! Bro, knock him out! Knock him out, bro! Oh, he's a Beyblade. He's definitely a Beyblade, dude. Sir Manfred, thank you for the 40 months. Welcome back. E trains, what's up? You played this part yesterday. Nice, dude. Are you just a little bit after this part right now? I'm glad that I'm not spoiling this for everybody. That a lot of you guys have already gotten ahead of me. It's probably like it wasn't even planned on purpose, but I'm, I'm I am glad I'm playing this this late into the release. Because originally uh, I would have played it right away if I was streaming a little bit sooner after that break. I was actually just waiting to see if they had a code available for it, which I apparently there was a code for me, but it was already used by somebody because a lot of the codes they gave out were already used somehow. So there's like a little bit of a mix up with that. But um, yeah, if I had actually come back to streaming a little sooner as well, I might have and had better luck with the code. I would have played it pretty soon. Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing like my brother. You ain't seen nothing yet. OK, here we go. Let's go. I'm ready. That's fine. I can take it. That's a really cool attack. Mind if I don't back it up good? So much fun. Oh, both of them join at the same time. So if you just spam them down, like, you have that one disadvantage. Ooh, I actually let him get me with that. Oh, I should have parried that one too. I could have got that. Even while being attacked, I could have got it. I have a curiosity here. I wonder what happens if you try to just kill him. This is kind of funny. Sorry for bothering you. You want to offer promotion for your channel, viewers, followers, views, chatbots, 
The price is lower than any competitor. The quality is guaranteed to be the best. Flexible and convenient order management panel. Everything is in your hands. Turn it off, customize, go to Streamrise RU. <sighs> that does sound like a pretty good deal. Should I do it, guys? Chat, decide. Decide for me right now. You have, you have 10 seconds. <laughs> Should we should we should we buy some view bots from uh, Streamrise? Are you? Sounds like a bargain. Oh yeah, let's let's do it. All right, I'm gonna definitely gonna heavily not do that. <laughs> definitely gonna totally just about decide to not actually do that. <laughs> I appreciate on, your time though. You ain't seen nothing like my brother. I wonder if that actually is a bot or a person. It could either be a person making something up randomly, an actual bot that does does sometimes get hits on that website and it works, or uh, a mix of both. I don't know. Okay, wait, wait. I didn't transform the weapon. This was a mistake. Mistakes were made, dude. I gotta wait for that attack. Oh, here we go. Here it is, buddy. Oh, it'd be cool if I could hit her Come through on. him, too. Ooh. You played nice with the others. Don't you want to play with me, Mr. Puppet? Should be hitting them with the poke attacks. Pokemon, gotta stab them all. Then my enemy will fall. Pokemon, just grab a big sword and hit them in the face. Pokemon, oh, it's you and me. Stabbing's my destiny, Pokemon. Even if you have a spear, I will kill you in three hits. <laughs> That's a really good strategy. I can farm some uh, vials if I have low vials. So this is Japan. I, I think we found here. the cheese. Core of me knows what he's doing. Definitely found some sort of cheese there. That attack is cool. I like that. She's doing some some uh, some Sekiro Ministry soldier min like knight dudes, whatever they whatever they're called, the, the Ministry Ninja people, the pinstripe outfits. Some spin kicks. We don't get extra points for fighting fair. Survive Another That's one's coming in? Is that is that on a timer as well? I'm just gonna hit you with the blue right here. Do that. Give me the other one. Oh, he has less health. Big baby. Way less health. Shoulda, shoulda came with some defense there. Shoulda wore Kevlar. <laughs> Dude just comes and takes your head off. How can you run that fast with a big sword? You're no bastard. You're a sweeper. There's news of yours. Oh. Oh. Oh, 
we're in there. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Knock him out, bro! Bro, knock him out. It's been a while since Damn. I put anyone six feet under. Little one is weirdly tanky, I know, right? You can grab her with the grappling hook arm mod. Ooh, that's cool. I forgot that I also have the fire too, but the grappling hook would be really cool. Um, I'm gonna change that. Spear guy's really easy to cheese, apparently. Well, even just with me poking with the sword, that was much, much easier than charge attacks on him. Let's try the grapple. One HP run already. <laughs> Are you enjoying this fight, Vine Walker? Okay, this is the best humanoid fight so far. Between the Atoned and the Donkey, this is definitely the best. Like, the big guy is a really cool boss by himself, without even having the additional ones. I can see in a run the additional ones making it really annoying, but I guess on a first playthrough, they're, they're part of a gang, right? So, Bring it, on. You ain't it definitely fits. Like <laughs> Why is she getting me so much worse now? Why are you so fast? safe on the next dude. So this is Geppetto's pump here. Gore and me knows what he's doing. That's so fast. Oh my god. Smo and Ornstein? <laughs> Smo and multiple Ornsteins. <laughs> Smo, Ornstein, and, and some, some children. They had a family. Proper trashing in it. <laughs> uh, how's the vile farm going? Uh, it, it was going pretty good until I died. I'll say that much. Okay, let's try switching back to the other weapon and see. Now that I've learned the parries a bit more. Got the saw blade again. Because it did so much damage with its ability. Parry big dude to break his weapon. To break his weapon, his weapon breaks. He actually snaps. Bring it on! You ain't seen nothing like my brother.
check check this out. Come on, you played nice. Like that's others. just wild. Don't you want to play with me? Oh, they got me. See that combo is nuts. So if I if I save that for after the first one appears, and then get one more stagger, he's dead basically. So I could possibly even skip some of them. I'm I'm kind of interested in trying to skip some of them. See if that's possible. So yeah, I had a feeling that frenzied uh, attack on the handle would go really well with with any blade that has like good scaling with the motivity. That is a probably the coolest ability so far. Skip them if you're nuts on damage. I just don't want to be too nuts on damage right away. I should probably kill the first one. Regroup, get him again in some sort of uh, stagger, then use the blue bar immediately to, to finish him off. But if I had the, the fabled vials, these things, oh man, it'd be ridiculous. It'd be over at that point. Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing like okay, so it started off without a buff. It's just really hard to get the charge attack. Oh, you know what? Maybe I start off with the other blade, then I switch it once the first one's dead. Use the um, the saw blade later. Yeah, probably once the blue bar's up. So we're going to use two different weapons for it. Might be way better. This one to start off seems much, much easier to use. Soda, what's up? How are you doing? It does break? That's crazy. When you're perfect blocking, if their weapon has a glow to it, then it can break? Ah, oh, I see. Pace seems really fast to the fighting. Some of it is very quick. It's it's kind of like Bloodborne, but like even more spammy and weird delayed attacks, kind of like Elden Ring. Mixed in there. There's a lot going on. You ain't seen nothing like my brother. Even the charge attack with this not transform is pretty good. <laughs> Stupid first add on. Yeah, she just attacks very quickly, so once she's in your face, it's already too late. Yeah. 
So this is Geppetto's okay, there we go. Now I got three. Now I switch to the... Oh, it's the wrong weapon. No! Wrong weapon, dude. No, dude. Get away. Get away. Oh, my God. Okay, that was, that was a huge waste. Okay, now I gotta really, really dial it in. One, two, three. Yeah. That wasn't the right ability. That was the weapon. That was just my Y attack. Damn it. Okay, that, that's definitely the strategy, though. Fuck. <laughs> can you perfect parry with dex weapons? I think you can with everything. You like the game, Soda? I really like this game. It's getting pretty crazy. At first, I was like, I was, I didn't dislike it or anything, but I was still kind of trying to figure, feel it out and figure out what it's about. And uh, it definitely evolves into a better game as you play it. It's not like it got worse or anything, or it stayed the same. It definitely got better, especially with the environments and the storyline, the twists. Like you're not. I thought we were just going to be fighting the the robots the whole time or the puppets, right? So the fact that that's not a thing is cool already. And then some of these areas have been really, really awesome. Like very memorable. Bring it on. You Miriam, what do you miss? Like uh, I got to this guy and we haven't killed him yet. That's that's about it since um, St. Andreas. It's the next boss right here. You can hold guard and hit Y when a perfect guard would have hit and do a parry stun. Isn't that with one of the abilities of the handles? Or is that like an actual base mechanic? Got splorped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good. That's a very good word. Yeah, the handle thing. I remember seeing that ability. I think I have one that's like that. Game looks beautiful. It, it's very good looking for sure. That's what I was saying. Unreal Engine, they gotta take advantage of that at FromSoft. Okay, I'm gonna do this one more attempt. I think this is gonna be a very serious and good one. And if we don't get it on this one, I'll take a break for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and we'll we'll do some more. Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing like my. I should farm up the blue on the enemies beforehand. It's not good. <laughs> She runs so fast, it's actually kind of funny. That's like the Naruto run times 10. Okay, we'll, we'll get the other guy as well first. And then I'll save the buff for the, uh, the final weapon. Don't you want to play with me, Mr. Puppet? His weapon actually broke. 
That's so funny. We finally fu we finally got the broken weapon. And he actually got me with that. doesn't back up. So this is Geppetto's okay, here we go. Here, huh? admit, I like it. Alright, let's doing. switch. And then heal. Buff. Okay, big damage coming up, dude. Some yeah. massive damage. Here. Check this out, guys. Kill him. Got him. He died from the fire. Skip the third dude. Thank you for the GGs, guys. That was fun. That was cool. Vatum, everything's going good, dude. How are you? I'm, I'm really enjoying this game. It's fun. I was actually thinking about it a little bit yesterday, too, and I usually if I think of a game outside of playing it, it's probably pretty damn good. So. Nice strat. Cario, thanks, man. I was thinking, like, that's probably the best way to do it, because in the beginning, that weapon's too slow for the charge attacks, but even if I can trade with him, at that point, he's dead, right? All right. Thank you for the GG's, guys. Ooh. Eliminated. Resplendent, Ergo Chunk, and Taunt. Let's check out the Taunt. <laughs> That's not really like a Taunt, though. Oh, there we go. There we go. He's like, come here. I thought he was just gonna like loosen his shoulder for a second. I'm like, what if the man has shoulder problems after killing three people in an alleyway? Really love Zerg strats. That's how you take down bosses too. I was I was gonna say if I can do it, why not try it and see? Because I think we got the most we could out of the fight. We've learned Let's everything there was, unless he had like a phase two so beyond the weapon be breaking. I, I don't think he had a phase two, did he? Very high piece. All right, go back to the hotel, talk to, looks like, um, the butler. Mushu, thank you for the two months, by the way. Welcome back. And for using your Prime sub as well. Um, do you find the merchant by the previous Stargazer? Yes. Yeah, I got the record from him, and then... That's actually how I got the, the this blade, or this handle, sorry. The Bramble Curved Sword handle. And then I bought, um one of the acid buffs from him Welcome as well. Welcome to Hotel Krat. How may I be? The stalkers are Krat's vigilantes. There are two groups of them, the bastards and the sweepers. The bastards are an organization of guards for the alchemists and the workshop. Motto, honor or nothing. The sweepers are an organization of guards for the old families of Krat. Motto, we always repay what is owed. Historically, the relationship between the two groups has been turbulent, but most were killed in the puppet's full-scale attack. That is what little I know beyond the hotel walls. May I serve you in some other way? Paulandina, you did a great job. You cannot serve me in any other way. I'm thirsty, though. Give me a fucking drink, dude. <laughs> I have 9,000 of the Ergo we should level. I'll use my power to help you. This game looks neat meta. It's really cool. 
Um, though at first you were that you're doing a speed run, you thought I was, but then seeing your place first playthrough is also fun. Artorius, yeah, I haven't actually completed this yet. I started it two days ago. This is the third day. I'm hoping I can have it beaten in the next handful of days because TwitchCon's coming up on the 19th. I'm trying to debate if I want to take a day off before then or not because I'm going to have to take a day off on the 19th, 20th, 20th, and then maybe the 21st. So I might stream right up until the 18th and just do this until it's done. And then if this does get completed, I'll take a little bit of a break before we go. Um, unless it gets completed way sooner than I think it's going to, but people were saying they got stuck on bosses for like four hours. There's There hasn't been a single thing I've gotten stuck on so far for more than, like what, like maybe just over an hour or something like that? 30% way through, most of the game is still to come. That's what people were saying yesterday, but we've already played another three and a half hours, so I must have not progressed that far from yesterday then. Yeah, Vigor seems to be something super important right now. Like, I need a lot more stamina, so... I'm going to do 17 Vigor, one more Vitality, and I think we're good with damage anyway, so... Yeah. And we're just continuing. You expect Lords of the Fallen being as good as this? I would hope it's as good as this. That'd be amazing. Imagine that then. Then there's two other games that are actually good that I could play a little bit more of, especially if people actually have interest beyond the first playthrough. <laughs> Show off, Hephaestus. Why am I showing off? What happened? Is the gameplay better in some way than from soft games? Uh, in certain ways, there's a couple things that are cooler than what FromSoft has done in, in certain cases, but I would still say I like those games better. Um, this one's just really good, though. Really good for what it is. It's very unique. And uh, it'll be hard to not play again. I think I will play it again. It's just like, again, with, with streaming and stuff like that, it's just a matter of all the things I planned to do before this even came out that I still want to get done. And then, uh, I guess, again, if we start Lords of the Fallen on, I guess it would be Sunday that they want to do the sponsored stream. However long that takes to complete after TwitchCon, as well as the Elden Ring run I wanted to do. So I haven't played that in a long time now. And then all the other Souls games that I wanted to do runs on. So, yeah. Quite a few different things. Plus, like, writing, writing videos that are just not related to any of this stuff. Uh, anyways, I'm going to take a break. I will be back in five minutes, guys. Also, if you do enjoy the stream, you want to check me out on other social media platforms, definitely subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already. There's a lot of cool videos on there. There's a lot more coming up as well. Discord for when I go live, because there's a bot that notifies exactly when I'm live. Twitter, if you want to know ahead of when I'm going to be live, I'll usually put an update anywhere from like 15, 20 minutes all the way to like multiple hours ahead of time. Uh, there's a TikTok if you have one. It's a little newer, but there's going to be a bunch of clips. It's essentially the clips channel if you've missed some, some, some funny stuff. And some of them are edited too. And uh, yeah, and the Instagram is just if you want to catch up with things I'm doing behind the scenes that I share sometimes. So I will be back shortly and then we'll continue this.
Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. All right, we're back. Vespi, thank you so much for the six months, dude. Appreciate that. Enjoy your new badge, you're a human now. 25% of the game, Valerie, that I've completed. That's interesting to hear the different perceptions of that. So we went from 30% yesterday to 25% today, and then someone's saying 40. Up to 40, that's crazy. 15%'s a pretty big difference. All right. Probably should spend the rest of the Ergo on something. I don't know. Wait, how many, how many more points for another level? I'll use my power. Hmm. Either that or I buy stuff. I should probably buy more of the Fable Welcome to things. Fable Catalysts. Let's buy five of them. Goomba, what's up, man? <laughs> Let strength be granted. We'll all need it. You don't need strength. You just need the power of friendship, dude. That's it. Wait, why is it still saying uh, to talk to Paul and Dina? Oh, no, it's saying to talk to... Uh... Oh, yeah, that, sorry. Paul and Dina is... This guy. Uh, Puccinella. Never mind. At the house of Anini, even priceless things have a price. Every item is a treasure of distinguished quality and superior provenance. Oh dear. This is the mark of the Black Rabbit Brotherhood, a notorious band of stalkers. 
The Stalkers as a unified force ceased to be after their defeat at the Battle of the Workshop Tower. The Black Rabbit Brotherhood took over the Marlon District after that. I believe you could use this mark to move safely whilst on the Black Rabbit Brotherhood's turf, to use their unsophisticated vernacular, and give you entree <laughs> to the Black Market as well. They're unsophisticated vernacular, nice. But be nice. careful, sir. The Black Rabbit Brotherhood is quite infamous for how they treat interlopers. If they catch you, they'll put you in the liar's coffin. Yes, I believe it is as unpleasant as it sounds. Ah, and I see we have new physical records to catalog for the collection. Such effort deserves commensurate reward, don't you think? Crescent Moonstone, nice. That is pretty cool. I know my way around. I need three more though for an upgrade. All right, let's continue. Played the first Lords of the Fallen. It was something's ways. <laughs> I really hope the new one is better than the first one. I really do. I guess we'll see. If you guys are waiting to buy it and you want opinions and you're okay with spoilers, on Sunday I'm going to check it out for two hours. Technically I'm allowed to play it right now, but uh, I definitely want to stay pretty solid on this and not mix it up too much. So, I mean, if we could actually have this done by Sunday, that'd be wild. What do you think the chances are of that? If I stream roughly five to six hours a day all the way through Sunday, do you think I'll be able to beat it with another 15 to... 20 hours put in. Because at this point, we're roughly at mm, 14 and a half. Or wait, 15, 15 hours roughly. 75% chance, maybe. Okay. Let's do it. So, where are we going from here? We came in from that way. Black Rabbit Brotherhood Ledger. Sale of 10 Ergo complete. I like our old broker man because he always pays us well. But when he's in a hurry, it's hard to secure the Ergo he needs. Sometimes I wonder if he devours it or something. What does he need Ergo for? Does he really eat it? No scribbling on the ledger, kid. The alchemists are asking for more gold coin fruit. Ooh, we need gold coin fruit for the other guy. It's not easy to get, so this could be a problem. I think the hotel guys are slowly catching on to what's going on. We can physically clash with them, but that's a last resort. Our sibling safety comes first. Oh, how touching, bro. Shut up. <laughs> that's actually so funny. It actually says shut up in there. Uh, acquired five ergo. I'm real close to the end of this job selling corpses. Just a bit more and I'll have enough to escape this blasted city. That proposal from the alchemist is tempting, but I'm running short on ergo and I'm not sure about it. This is kind of wild. They're like trying to like basically just get like s double digits of Ergo through these jobs. And I have like one single thing that pops for 700 plus we've gotten like thousands by beating them. I'm very confused right now. Are, the, are these like lower le level Brotherhood people or are they just actually like kind of hurting for the cash right now? This is this is interesting. Think about an expedition to the Barren Swamp. Get me new parts if you go to town. A dress for me. A gun and a weapon for me. This is not your journal, dumbasses. <laughs> Took you around 35 to 40 hours first playthrough. Okay. I guess we'll see. We'll see if the build ends up being really good. Oh, we got some more quartz. Nice. There's a lift in there. I think the low lighting situations in this are where it shines the most graphically. Very, very good in low lighting. This month's trend, stalker masks. Why did the stalkers start wearing animal masks? According to city historians, 
It was customary to wear animal masks in ancient Krat. It was one of the rituals to show off one's life when f the f when one fought the legendary rock titans. Believe it or not, but this legend is an inspiration to today's stalkers. It's not just for defense and fashion, but also for ranks that show off one's abilities. The link between rank and animal masks isn't clear, but mostly the powerful ones chose their preferred mask first. Perhaps there might even be newbies forced to wear silly masks chosen by their seniors. In these troubled times of petrification disease, how about refreshing your mind with an energetic stalker mask? Choose a soul animal to your liking. Various fashionable stalker masks await you. P.S. This item includes a spore filter to protect against the petrification disease, patented by the workshop. Hey, bro. Wait, should we, should we make this guy sound like Joey Wheeler or something like that? Hey, bro. HQ was toast, so uh, how about those black leopard masks? Like, yeah, the workshop's toast too. Why? So why would they make it? I wish there was more of these notes. They're pretty funny. Check the portrait in the room. Nobody messes with Joey Wheeler. I summon my flame swordsman. In attack position. Hey, check this out. Looks like you, sort of. From a certain angle. You know, if you squint. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, it, it looks exactly like you. I mean, you see it, right? With the nose and the... That right? is me, isn't it? In terms of finishing, Sasha Gray is stuck at 50 hours plus. Oh, damn. Yeah, I guess there's going to be different hours for everybody, dude. Like, um, Sam said that he, like Sam and chat, he came here yesterday and he said that it took him 30 hours to beat the game. It took three days. But Sam's pretty damn good at this kind of stuff. And I bet you probably made a really good build, so. Like, if any of you guys are beating it in less than 30 hours or around 30, that's that's pretty crazy. Because I can already see, if you're saying I'm only 25% through or something like that, 30%, that's, that's ridiculous, man. The only areas where we really wasted a lot of time were the area today. And then the area from yesterday when I was inside the, I guess, underneath the church. That's pretty much it. Boss fights didn't really waste too much time at all. They were fine. And then obviously I'm taking a little bit of time to read everything, but that's still not even that that much time wasted. That's like very, very minimal amounts of minutes spent. Time. Took this 25 hours, but he's hella fast. Did he read every single note as well and and like talk to everybody, try to search for every item? Or did he just kind of go with the flow? Three days non-stop, your senses get impaired and you get slower and clumsier. That's why I've been trying to not stream this too many hours, because I know that I want to. I could. But I'm like, let's take a break and do other things. I want to do some other stuff throughout the day. <laughs> and I want to enjoy it when I come back to it a lot and like Hello. I said, be focused. It's a relief to see you. I I'll get straight to the point. I found the gold coin tree. Oh, I found it. Nice. Who knew it was right beside us? But there's a problem. When I tried to, 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 to pick the gold coin fruit, it, it resisted me. I, I couldn't even get close. It actually burned me. It's probably because I have the petrification disease. P -p Pathetic, yeah. So close yet so far. If you pick some gold coin fruit for me, I'll give you a reward. I might look urbane now, but I, I, I used to be a farmer. I'm, I'm also interested in growing trees. I heard about a vendor who sells plant alchemy boosters. They might work on this tree, too. If you come across such boosters, bring them to the tree. I heard the alchemists made a device capable of fully utilizing gold coin fruit. I ignored it, assuming it was just a legend. You hear all sorts of wild tales about <laughs> alchemists. <laughs> now that I Looks know like gold Oregon. coin fruit actually exists, though, perhaps it's all true. He reminds me of Mr. X with hair. Interact with the Saint Test statue at the Grand Exhibition. You might be able to use the other powers of the gold coin fruit. All right. He's your favorite NPC. He's pretty cool so far, definitely. 
Gerard from My Chemical Romance. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It's like if Gerard was cosplaying Mr. X, but then just kept the blue hair. It's like, when I was a young boy, my puppet took me into the city to see the golden tree. But I was wow. so sick that I couldn't uh, I never touch the to golden the gold fruit, though. Tree in a place so like he this. picked it for me. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, let's strength be grand golden so coin the fruit. Might be mended. Money does grow on so trees. The oh, the tree's literally right here, too. That's funny. Squeal, hope you're going well, Squeal. Until the next fruit is ripe, there's a timer. Chieftain, thank you so much for the 33 months. Welcome back, dude. I'm doing good, dude. How are you? We're trying to help Gerard, or not. <laughs> I called him Gerard, sorry. Stalker. Gian Gio, we're trying to help him get some <laughs> golden fruit. Oh, he's got the gems for purchase now, so I actually can use those in the cube. So we got the one that he already gave me for free before, the recovery wish stone. We got stamina recovery. Legion. Fable charge. Spectre HP. Is that a spoiler? Spectre HP means you could like summon a phantom? Or, oh, specters are the, the co-op people. The co-op phantoms for the bosses. My bad. Explodes when specter is hit. That's pretty cool. Protection wish stone. Um, reduces specters. Okay, we don't want anything with specter in the title because that's for people that cheat on the game and need help. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I'm joking. You guys can use specters, but you suck though. <laughs> Generates specters acid attack. Spectre attracts enemies' attention for a set period of time. Uh, I'm going to go with the stamina. Stamina is way better than the HP, in my opinion. So I'm, even if it's kind of mild, it'll help on a lot of those situations with the heavy weapons. So, um, Yeah, let's get two of them. How does the cube work? Stalker. Um, so you put a wish stone in it, which is a consumable. Once you use it, it's a one-time use for the actual gem, but the cube is like a key item and you're able to use a, an ability. So temporarily, temporarily restoring HP is one that we had before. And then this one's max stamina over a period of time. So it, it's, it's active until you die, I'm pretty sure. Or there might be a timer on the gem, but you get a one-time use for it until you respawn. Finally seen you live. Love the vids. Found it. I appreciate that. Thank you, dude. Welcome in from the YouTube channel. This is, uh, this is day three of Liza P. I don't know if you played this game, but it's it's getting pretty damn good. Use the cube exactly once in three full playthroughs. I've used it quite a few times, but people were saying like once um, he moves locations, obviously you have to pay for the gems, so that might not be a good thing to do if these gems actually aren't better than the HP one. The HP one was not that good. But we'll try the stamina one. Oh wait, this links into the hotel. Ah. Wait a second, then where are we going? That's cool how it, it goes in like a loop. talk to people that's true i think he probably said something about it he probably told me well we were talking about the like or sorry um Puccinella said that you can use the mark of the the black rabbit brotherhood and then kind of blend in with them and then go on a mission through their their place but i don't know where that actually is located from here maybe hmm 
We already went upstairs here too. Somewhere outside? Was there a ladder? Wait, let's let's check and see who we can talk to at the hotel. Maybe there's more. Yes, there is. Talk to the uh, the daddyo. Le papa. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Did you miss me? What's what am I getting for my birthday? Like did I do I go, get a did, get a can I get a bicycle? Time for the game to really amp up now. Real game's about to begin. Okay, let's let's calm down. Let's just pretend it's a lot easier than it is. I don't wanna I don't wanna believe that it's getting harder. We have to believe it's getting easier. It's, it's a mind game. All right, uh, I wanted to get, oh, what was it? The amulet slot, right? Paul sells an amulet slot would be nice. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do amulet slot first. Enhances the attack of fable arts. Ooh, that's pretty good. Might take that. It enhances stagger duration. Both of those are really good. Enhance weapon attack when durability is at maximum. Enhance attack when discharged. Enhance ambush dagger. And then perfect guard destruction. I'm going to do fable arts. Next area is your favorite. I think so far my favorite is... Mm. Oh, you know what, I can't actually really tell you. The area leading up to um, St. Andreas, like the one with all like the walkways and the crazy stuff as we go underground under the church, that was probably the coolest so far. The Malam district kind of like sense fortress was as grim ish. as we feared, was it not? But with the Black Rabbit, with enough playthroughs, you can unlock everything. That's picture, probably why people are doing so many playthroughs. We can focus elsewhere. And why Someone in chat said they're on the NG plus five. The, the King of Puppets' lair is on Rosa Isabel Street. Perhaps the puppet frenzy will come to an end if we can take down their king. Go to Antonia and get the key to Rosa Isabel Street. I already let her know you'll be coming by. I always remember these favors you've done for me. Though it pains me to send someone so precious into such peril. Alright, talk to Rosa to get the key. Who's Rosa again? It's not her, is it? I'll use my power to. Not Sophia. Um, <laughs> the names are not sticking with me in this. That's the only thing. Like I know Puccinella, we know pa Paladina, um, Vanini, um, and something Anginini. I know my way. Eugenie, around. yeah. <laughs> Wheelchair lady. Oh, Rosa. But I thought her name was something else. Is that like a short form for Hurry me? Up. That's Antonia. from Geppetto. Rosa Isabel Street is ever so dangerous, I'm told. I hoped... Oh, Rosa Isabel Street's the place I'm supposed there. to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. To stop this disaster once and for all, I fear we've no choice. Geppetto and I care about you very much, you know. Stay safe. For both of us. 
I feel like my time is slowly coming to an end. However, it's a nice feeling to know that someone waits for you. That someone cares. Please take care out there. Rosa Isabel Street entrance key. If you came from the mall, I knew the tree was at the hotel, of course. I heard the crowd, many people. Okay, now where is there a place where we can use a key? Is it that big gate where the tree is? Oh, maybe it's out this way, actually. There was something over here before. I could be wrong. I'm definitely wrong. So many names. There is a lot of characters, yeah. Although in Dark Souls, like I had a hard time remembering some of the names for those characters, although the playthrough is really long, so eventually I got it. This way? Yes. Wait, no. No, it's not that way. <laughs> That's already open. So it is where the golden tree is, the big gate. I'm only wondering because like the only gate I know of right now, there's probably more than one, but the only gate I know um, didn't have a prompt on it. So there's another door up there too. Played this through a couple times and each time you've been like, wait, where do I go again? That's been me pretty frequently on this, yeah. I was saying though before, if I was like fully paying attention and I was like not streaming it, not thinking of other stuff, it would be a lot easier to always know where we are. But that is usually the case with any kind of game, especially if it's a new game. And after, like if I play this once and I go through it again, I'll probably remember most of it. What does that door go to? Oh, that's it, okay. It's inside the actual hotel. Streaming takes away some focus. It can, definitely. That's why it's really funny when people, like, they mention, they point that out. They're like, wow, can't believe that, this, that, whatever. It's like, okay. It's like, but you do this. That's a really high up bridge of some sort, whatever that is. Rosa Isabel Street, the entertainment district. You might call it extravagant. Operas, operettas, street concerts, all running 24-7. Adelina Corday, the singer in the red dress. Oh, she was the most famous of them all. The legendary prima donna. Mm. Whoa, back to puppets again. Sure if she's still alive, so... Okay, we want the puppet damage it's, amulet. Sense. It's... Yeah, it's getting a little depressing. Definitely the puppet damage amulet. Let's see if we can do two shots. Oh, it's still not two shots. That's not that much extra damage, then. Maybe the stamina would be better. I heard someone singing over there for a second. It's only 10%. It didn't seem like it made a difference. Because, like, I, I, it looked the same. Maybe everything has so much health at this point, it doesn't matter too much. Even the R2 doesn't one shot. see the witch's tower and princess poster the comedy praised by audience and critics alike the Estella Opera House will be presenting this grand finale sorry it's grand finale it's the last work of the best writer of crap Coppelius Compellin as well as the last performance of the red actress 
Adelina Corday, the greatest prima donna of our time. The greatest adventure of an evil witch, a gallant knight, and a beautiful princess awaits you. Come join an unforgettable experience of laughter, tears, and thrills. Oh, who are you? Ah, oh, my stalker friend. I was worried the puppets had come back. <laughs> They're demons. They won't give us a moment's peace. Even an elderly lady like me. They wouldn't even let the dead rest if they had the petrification disease. Drives a lady to drink, it does. <laughs> Which reminds me, I could use a proper tipple. A proper tipple. There's a, there's a wine called La Blaouie. When I was younger, they called it the Ruby of the Heavens. We went through like where the... the... I'm sure there's still some left in the wine cellar at Lorenzini Arcade. There was a bunch of it when we went by. You're an enterprising lad. Bring it to me and I'll give you something nice in return. Okay, this lady's definitely my favorite NPC so far. Just <laughs> that, that, that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> give me a proper tipple. Yeah. Oh, an enterprising young lad. Damn drunks. She's like, uh, uh, takes shot, feels a little bit better, and she's just like, uh, 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 ooh, and then falls over. Boy. Stuck inside, and you need to help me get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine during COVID, someone had their window open, and they're like, go to the uh, like the liquor store or whatever. <laughs> Give me, give me a shot, please. <laughs> Objective: find some booze. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing. So we need the uh, arcade. We need to find the arcade. Crescent moonstone, nice. I did. I actually needed more of those. Yo, I'm down. She's out here breaking and entering people's houses, asking for babies and wine. <laughs> Boy. I thought that was a different NPC than the first one. The, the lady that had the baby, she sounded a little bit different. Maybe I'm mistaking it, but I thought that was a different one. And I thought she just knew that you were a stalker. Artist Doodle. Puppets are the most beautiful of beings. Even their human masters are incomplete beings in comparison. Creation's more perfect than their creator. The creator who created them. Which would you praise more? Sounds like someone that definitely has a little bit of a... A little bit of a psychological thing going on. It's like Pinocchio's not just a real boy. He's better than humans. Okay. Ah. That's kind of cool. Got the martyrdom exploding guys. Wait, did she come back? Or is there two of them? Throwing cell. Sharp pipe. Okay, this area is definitely Central Yarnum vibes. Definitely. That, that little thing right there with the carriage and everything definitely I just heard someone hit a piano that was weird hmm. there was nothing we missed before this part was there I had the door there and then just want to double check and make sure there was nothing else we could do yo we came from this way uh, and then that is not accessible. Secret door behind the ladder. Like when you drop down? Oh, right here. Ooh. No, no, no. Bad.
<laughs> That's such a terrifying sound. <laughs> it's like I hired this android to clean my house and cook for the kids, but it just keeps going. <laughs> Every single time I go to sleep, I feel at, I feel a lot of tension. I feel like I'm gonna die. Hated some of the enemies that show up here. Sneak attack through the box. Oh. She just remembered a funny joke. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Poppet's remembering things? That sounds like a defect. We gotta kill him. They're not supposed to remember, they're supposed to just do the script. What is that thing? Ooh, it's like a baby bot? Oh my god, that's terrifying, dude. Look at the face! Why is that so scary? Why is this the scariest thing in the game, dude? What the fuck? Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna like slam them all at once. Ooh, see it. They have some health. Mm, not anymore. Okay, wait, look at the face on this thing. That is possibly the scariest thing I've seen in the game, dude. It looks like if Casper the Friendly Ghost took a lot of drugs and then died. That's that's not... What's in the mouth, too? Is that like a flamethrower? There's like a little... Dude, there's like a... <laughs> there's like something in the back of the throat there. Wasn't that how, that how Casper died? Oh, it's the speaker. Okay. I thought it was supposed to shoot fire or something. Looks like your, your average Binding of Isaac enemy, except for Binding of Isaac's not 3D. If it was, it'd be terrifying. Special Report, Foreigner's Confession. The alchemist paved the way for Kraut's Golden Age, and no one denies the fact. But what if instead of gold, they were here to cause an unprecedented disaster? <coughs> I'm choking on my own saliva. Being a reporter, I received a surprising message from the informant who was once an alchemist himself. It's about a stranger from across the ocean, an alchemist from far east who was once famous in Krat. He learned the group's secrets and quit, and now he uses a different identity out of fear for his safety. The relic of Tr Trismegistus is not just a simple ergo mine. That place is dangerous. My source claimed that the alchemists have an ulterior motive. One not for the benefit of the city, and that they have a very risky plan involving Ergo. The conspiracy theory about how hundreds of people can die sound, sounded preposterous, but the evidence provided had a surprising amount of credibility to it. So as a reporter, I spent months with the informer and I was able to see the dark side of Krat. I intend to deliver my report for the benefit of the citizens. The rest is severe, severely damaged. Publication of this text was banned for spreading false information and promoting social unrest. Additionally, reporter Medoro has been suspended indefinitely from our newspaper. We apologize to the citizens for any trouble. Seems like a feature you wouldn't include for a puppet baby. Yeah, me either, man. They, they kind of, the budget's been, no wonder the, the Black Rabbit Brotherhood are like, just kind of like, scrounging for the Ergo Man. They spent all the money on the ba the baby speakers. And they, they also spent a lot of money on their health bar, too. They were super tanky. Like, no reason. Oh, we got a gun. That's new. Pretty sure that's a new thing. Although there was people blowing up, uh... Running at me, so that's kind of cool too. Oh, that actually connected nice.
Oh, the built-in flamethrower. Yeah, sorry. My bad. I don't think they need a speaker either, though. They're already creepy enough, right? Hot takes, but that's that's what I'm saying. They don't need a speaker. That hit the box. No. It's gonna be fine. We're just gonna sneak around the corner and get the item and no one's gonna kill us. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to get some throwing items on one of these slots. Hmm. Got quite a few of the saw blades and the sharp pipes. I'm gonna do the uh, the cell. Oh no, I fell down. Am I stuck here now? Dude, I wish I had not fallen down there. This is a really good song. The show tunes. Man, I want to go back up there with the gun, guys. Imagine the way to get out is to just dance to the song. Believe me, you don't. I really do. Use the item? Uh, which item? Oh, to get to the Stargazer. Is this actually supposed to be like a trap? I thought there was a way. I thought they always make it so there's a way out. So there's literally no way out of here. Oh, the prompt. Oh, what a beautiful puppet you are. I can hear your springs even if you try to hide them. Musicians have keen ears, you know. Would you like to sing for me like your friends? I have a feeling the sound of your cries will be especially sweet. Let's have an encore performance of pain for the red actress, Adelina Corday. I dedicate this Whoa. performance to my sister, Whoa, Adelina. Boss fight. Yep, white lady. Uh, not looking like good odds here, guys. Jeez. Spear time? I think most definitely. Whoa! Dude, how did I get out of that? That's crazy. Not four or five, that's not too bad. Woo. Can I cheese her? Oh, guys, if I do a one HP cheese the whole time. You have to, you have to regard me as the greatest. You have to tell the story. Oh, I did it. Share, share to the people. Ah! Seems winnable. It did until that happens. That's a really cool outfit, dude. That's almost too cool for the game. Why is everyone so violent? I know. Why don't, why don't they just chill? Maybe they need to, like, when we find the <laughs> the uh, the alcohol for that lady, maybe we have to give her some, too, at the same time. <laughs> like, calm down. Okay, that's a two-shot. That's better. That type of damage is much better on the puppets, I guess. I wonder if it would still be with the transform.
Kind of want to fight that lady with the saw blade, though. See ya. If only we had a red tear stone. Is there an equivalent of red tear stone in this? Is there anything like that? Okay, I'm kind of just running in circles. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to the stargazer again. And then we're actually going to run through this very diligently. <laughs> Bipede dudes in furry costume. <laughs> Weakness pumpkin spice latte. That's funny. It'd be, it would be hold the foam, triple decaf, cinnamon on the top, and then... Like, in a, in a Trente cup, but actually grande. Double cupped with, uh... With whipped cream for the little dog in the purse. Oh, boy. No! No. No. Why do I only have three of the... Oh. <gasps> Dude. Why do I only have three of the things? The pulse cells. Oh, I'm on the wrong item, that's why. Here we go. Oh, now we can we can get some revenge on these guys. <laughs> Until that happens. This lamp is saving me. Literally the, the strongest defense of all time. Just stand behind the lamppost. They'll just stop attacking. They won't even they won't even try. Too overpowered, dude. Oh yeah, that was really good actually. Mmm. He's shooting me through there. Spooky. Let's see how good the saw blade is. Just want to check this out first because this was the primary objective before the white lady. Oh. Oh. Consumable only run? Maybe. Maybe, dude. That was really good. With the shot put. It's wasted all. Oh shit, I healed again. Where are you coming from? Oh, I forgot about that guy. Silly me. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Good damage. I'm gonna use the cube for this one. I'm gonna waste the cube. Although we bought more gems, so we can always justify it. I think I used the attack to dodge there. Thank god they didn't make those have a close up attack. Sawtooth wheel. What's in the chest? Let's see. Something good, please. Why they want to kill Pinocchio? Yeah, exactly. Who would ever want to kill Pinocchio? Dancer's curved sword blade. B with technique. Okay, what's the blade? Uh, the handle do? Time the enemy's attack correctly to deflect it and trigger powerful attack. So I already have one that does that, but that's pretty cool. Really good dex weapon. So it was worth going over there. Everyone's like saying it's not worth it. Making it seem like it's too hard. Okay, then we're going to go and fight her with one vial again. Let's have... 
I Check dedicate this, this performance to my sister Adelina. That didn't even do any damage. Oh, they, they thought about it. They figured it out. Like, people are going to do that. I can poke too. I can definitely poke. Seems doable, more like not even likely, dude. Damn. Not very ladylike, no. The parry, that's crazy. Has anything even parried me in the game? Or is that just like a particular feature for that boss? That was scary. I almost want to take my weapon off just to run there very quick. <laughs> well, that happened. That happened too. I tried. Have a bit of a serious question. You lost your love for video games. Last time you were really excited to come home and play was when you finished Dark Souls franchise. Even before that, you had no real pleasure playing games. After Dark Souls, it was lost again. You'd love to enjoy games again, but for, for some reason you can't. Can you give me some tips? Them, just don't play games, dude. If you're not enjoying them, don't do it. It's a, it's also, um, it could be that there's some games that you don't really have that interest for because they're just not the right games at the moment. But also, if you play a lot of games too, your dopamine is probably screwed up because games give dopamine at a rate that's not actually realistic and there's nothing you can really do in the real world that can give you dopamine that easily that's not actually super destructive for your brain. So like, that's why like when people say, oh, go outside, enjoy nature, like, you know, do things like, have a have a hobby do something else that's challenging it's like the only saving grace that i have in playing games is that i do things that are extremely difficult that don't give me dopamine anymore because i'm actually just pushing it to get like a record or something and i still delay the gratification to get the dopamine later so i'm using something that's dopamine heavy and like modifying it to not get dopamine as much but on, on a first playthrough of something or like when you're just enjoying games maybe you're playing multiplayer you're not really getting um, like a natural amount of it. It's like so it's like ab abnormal. So think about the dopamine as well. Think about how many things you do that delay gratification that are very difficult that don't actually make you satisfied immediately. Do more of those things in your life. And then on top of that, also really consider like maybe it's just a time where there's not a lot of games out. Could be a bit of both. Could be one, could be the other. That's the two things I think of first and foremost. But if you don't feel like playing them, don't play them. Uh, that's That's the simple answer. Like... It's it's not like you need to play games, right? You, like the fact you're even here and you're watching this too is is interesting. Like, cause that's cool. That's cool. You can still enjoy me doing this, but you don't need to actually play the game. That's amazing. Um, but I wouldn't force it though. I wouldn't say that there's a way to solve that by just like <laughs> playing a bunch of other games to see if it's gonna finally give you the same type of enjoyment. It's probably just because you like those games a lot. But again, if you're playing a lot of them, try not playing games at all for a while. Take a break. Ooh. Oh, I actually died from falling. Damn. He's flexing on us that he finished the franchise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's play playing while experiencing a burnout might make it worse, for sure. Yeah. Uh holy Helios, I appreciate that. Thank you, dude. How's it going, by the way? Also, uh, Scruffy, I'm enjoying this a lot. This game is really cool. I was giving it giving it an 8 out of 10 originally. I think I'm going to give it an 8.5. Because it actually has a lot of content in it, too. It's not like a short game so far. It is, it is a lot more linear, but they did a really good job at making some variety within the environments.
<laughs> they blew up the other guy. Whee! Okay, here we go. Let's get back over there. I think we're gonna use the saw blade. And just spam that legion attack. Do I keep the fable bar that I've just basically filled back up with those items if I die? Like it just stays like that, right? You might like this game more than Sekiro? That's crazy. It's a huge Let's statement. Have an encore performance you like this game more than Bloodborne? Oh my god, that's, a, that's huge. Actress, Rick Ross, what's up, dude? Cordell. When did I get a face cam? About f almost four years ago, like over three and a half years ago. This performance to my sister, Adelina! <laughs> okay, I gotta figure out these, these timings here. That's just ridiculous, dude. They make you parry her. Okay, but what if I just did this, though? That also works, too. What if I threw a big ball at you? Oh, I can't do that right now. You stole my sister from me, <laughs> rotten puppets. Rotten puppets. Run into it. Yeah, run into it. That's what I'm saying. Oh no, oh no. Oh no. There we go. Got a little bit of a combo. And I got my heal back. weapon now. Finish it off with a nice slow charge. Run wide in, run, run, run into it? No, wait, wait. Run into it. Just need you to run into it. Just run into it. Just run into it. Okay, I'm getting greedy. Oh, it's so close though. It's so close. Run into it, please. Yes, thank you. You're dead. The white lady's locket and the white lady's mask. I am definitely using that. Looking like a boss over here, like legitimately. That's so cool. I know that other people probably think the other mask is better. This is really cool so far. But because I need it to be matching, I need to change the robe now again. Might have to go back to the original. It matches the original the most. Hmm. You could do the black as well. Ah, uh, you know what? No, it kind of works with this. We'll, we'll use this. It, it works. You wore this for ages? It's a cool mask. I like it. Bro, press the cheater button. <laughs> This hunter took you way more tries than it should have. Really tough to be fair. She was cool. She was probably the coolest human enemy so far. I like the, the rapier. Because it doesn't telegraph as much as a weapon where they swing sideways. It's harder to parry or to deflect. This game comes fourth for Souls for you with Sekiro, DS1, and Elden Ring above it. Yeah. 
it's hard because there's so much like atmosphere and nostalgia to some of them that it's like it's it's getting up there for me with ds2 for sure like it's it's close to ds ds2 and demon souls but like not it's it can't there's something about those games that are intangible that this one it can't have because it came after them because it's actually it's actually mimicking them to a degree right so but the actual game for what it is that in all the original um qualities it has like the story the character um, I mean, some of the things it borrows as well to make it original are really, really good. They're up there. Rose Estate Instant left as a mystery. The city of Krat decided to put an indefinite stop to the investigation on disaster that took place in Monad Charity House, known as the Rose Estate. This was to prevent chaos caused by the large-scale spreading of the petrification disease. There has been no confirmed survivors so far. The petrification disease is a deadly epidemic, but this massive spread is unprecedented. The quarantine authorities surmise that the petrification disease caused the novel mutation. The Monad Charity House, once a boarding school for kids from the slums, had recently been home to the founding Monad family, many students and refugees as well. The leader of the alchemists, Valentius Monad, has been confirmed to have passed during this catastrophe, and this will take a toll on the alchemists. You can actually just walk around and backstab them repeatedly. Oh, really? Wow. Feels silly now. Although I've never really been good at walking around enemies and backstabbing them in this game compared to the other games. I really like the music over here, though. Lobo said he likes this way more than DS2 and Demon Souls. Really? <laughs> that's that's up there dude i mean it's a it is a really good game it is very it is a very good game i don't know if i could put it above them though it'd be very difficult to do that the boss fights are better than demon souls 100 percent, but the areas you can't build better areas than demon souls at this point and the music music's better 100 percent music's better um the vibes are close but they're not quite there yeah, it has. It gives me Bioshock vibes more than it even gives me Bloodborne, and I really like Bioshock. But I don't like Bioshock nearly as much as Bloodborne, so it's kind of like, yeah, I think. But the Bioshock cuts through a lot more for a lot of it. But then it depends because it, it really depends on what area you're into. Uh, wait. Let's see if there's there someone we got to talk to now. Talk to. Uh, Daddy-o again? Who's this guy? Oh. You're walking about in a place like this. You must be a stalker. Can I ask you a favor? My wife's body lies on Rosa Isabel Street. There was a fire, and I couldn't reach her through the flames. I know she's gone, but... I hate to think of her just lying there. Would you bring me her belongings? Then I'd have something to remember her by. Should I do it? Maybe I could do it. Hmm. Thank you. Small kindnesses like this give me something to cling to. Her body is on Rosa Isabel Street. She used to. I miss her so much. Okay, so now we got to go pick up a body that's on the street we just went through. Um, I guess. Because there's a shortcut right through to here from the other side. Either I missed something or that that's another area. Let's go back, talk to the dad, and then we'll figure that out. The music is quite nice, really adds something. Every single piece of music so far has been amazing. How do you feel about the mechanics? The only thing that slightly annoyed you is the bait attack some bosses have where they just hold their sword above their head for 10 seconds and you never know when they're going to strike that to, to me that kind of stuff makes it even better that's the, i like that kind of stuff because when you get really good at delayed attacks it almost feels like you're mind reading and way way more so than like a souls game where it doesn't have the delays and all that so i think this game's more dynamic with the move sets sometimes the, the move sets might not be as big as some of the souls games and it might not be as flashy in certain cases but they definitely have like crazy crazy dynamics and little things that they haven't even done in those that reminds me more of a of another game um question you were thinking about picking up electric guitar you know the basics for acoustic 
Would those carry over? Yeah, so electric guitar is actually easier to play, if that makes sense. So it depends on what you're playing on the guitar itself. That's kind of a whole nother discussion, but if you're just trying to like actually play an electric guitar, an electric guitar is much easier to play than acoustic guitars, unless your acoustic guitar is extremely expensive. But even then, nickel strings are, are way easier on your fingers than steel. And then I'd say if you play uh, nylon, nylon and, and the nickel from an electric will be the most similar because the first few of the nylon are nickel usually. The, bot, the top three will be nylon. That's pretty easy to, to hold too. But yeah, a lot of electric guitars are just more ergonomic and set up to be faster to play. So yeah, I'd say I'd say it would be fine. Go for it. You know, chords picking, etc. You should be completely fine with that. Also, for me, I don't know, this is something that's always been the case. Whenever I've gotten a new guitar in general, my playing always just gets better each guitar I get because I just am inspired to play more different stuff and do different things. So every time I've gotten a guitar, I've actually improved in music because it's just made me want to play different stuff or, or made, made me want to play better. And um, even from the very beginning. So there's been like an actual linear progression per guitar I've gotten. And that's regardless of electric or acoustic. Um, I have an acoustic in this room that's not like that easy to play, but even when I got that, I remember that was like, even th it inspired some things that I wasn't really playing as much before. So. All right. Let's go level first. Where is Sophia? I'll use my power to... Can we get a performance this stream on guitar? <laughs> um, if I beat a, if I beat another boss first try, then yes. If not, then I mean you can check out the music I already have on the main YouTube channel and on some some clips on Instagram. But I'm gonna actually be doing a new music channel where it has stuff that I haven't uploaded before that I've been working on. And then the goal was also to put some drumming on there too. Because I will be getting some electric drums um, in the winter. And we'll be doing streams with like a Clone Hero and the electric drums. And then I'll actually be playing some of the music that I originally covered on guitar. Maybe not all of it, but some of it. And it might, it might not be the exact song, but I'll just jam to it and it'll sound pretty decent. So that's something I want to introduce as well on the dedicated music channel. And yeah, just a lot of the, the stuff I've been doing lately, which is different than the electric guitar. So I have um, I have a couple anime songs, anime themes transposed into classical. Um, I have a couple things from video game music, so some Final Fantasy, Legend of Zelda. There's um, SAO, Elf and Lied theme that I got ready. Those four are already ready to go. They're practiced. And then um, some Animals as Leaders, classical stuff and just some other things I've been writing too that by the time I'm done those will probably be like good enough to just upload as they are so that's like the beginning list of things uh all right Ooh, what should we level we got one definitely bigger kind of anime do I enjoy? Uh, I actually don't really watch a lot of anime, but the ones I've enjoyed the most were Attack on Titan, Steins Gate, Death Note, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Non-Brotherhood, Elfin Lied, Psychopaths, uh, Steins Gate, if I didn't say that already. Uh, SAO Season 1 was good. It's pretty decent before um, Alfheim, and then... Actually, no, sorry, the movie. The movie was good. The original series wasn't that good. Like, it kind of, like, ruined the main character. But the actual movie, the one that came out in 2020 or something like that, that was good. That was actually really good. I like that a lot. It fixed a lot of stuff. And it looked amazing. The animation was crazy. Um, I also like... I liked Dragon Ball Z when I was younger, too. Welcome to Hotel Pro. And I liked Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot when I was a kid. I still think Yu-Gi-Oh! is pretty wild. Like, the concepts in it is just... I, I, I wouldn't be able to watch it and take it seriously nowadays, but there's a really funny series where a guy just goes and rips it apart and like makes fun of it. But it's actually so true because there's so many themes in it that are like well beyond what a child should be watching. And they they toned it down a lot for the North American version, but there's like guns, like people being held hostage, like literally people being sent to hell and stuff like that. There's like dark magic, like black magic, like witchcraft, freaking like so many scary things going on, people getting killed. Like <laughs> This portrait 
Have you seen Helsing? I haven't, but my, my uncle said Helsing is pretty cool. I remember it. And he also liked Castlevania a lot, too. He was telling me to watch those. I thought it was lost forever. I had no idea the Black Rabbit Brotherhood had stolen it. To think. Oh, also, um, you, Blue. Was it Black Lagoon you or Blue Lagoon? Brought it back to me. Something Lagoon. I watched a bit of that. That was good. Boondocks was a really good one. That was one of my favorites. His memories. Memories of a happier time. My son. Black Lagoon, yeah, I watched a bit of I that. That was good. Where to hang it in the hotel. Got the clap. Nice. That's a good gesture. That's a pretty audible clap. That's a good one. I like that. The city asked me. All right, now we're gonna just go back and continue. Grateful. Thank you for the good luck, dude. Never had more fun than watching Yu-Gi-Oh! High. <laughs> I, could, I could see that being hilarious, dude. But yeah, it's just there's so many themes in it that are just beyond what I it probably it explains why I liked it so much when I was a kid because it felt like it was like some some culty kind of secret content sometimes like there's some weird things going on and I heavily wish real life was like Yu-Gi-Oh where you could actually just make monsters appear from uh, tablets or different you know d different cards and actually like battle them and shit like of course everyone wants that but I, I like the uh, even the ancient Egypt theme too and also, I believe, like, there's a possibility, who knows, maybe people actually did that, and that's, ba like, maybe the aliens are, are planting seeds and, and making us get used to the, the anime when we were a kid that have, like, the, the shadow games in ancient Egypt, and that was actually a thing. And someone goes, and they're like, yeah, it's pretty probable that, like, in these ancient times, people actually conjured demons and freaking fought them or something. <laughs> Favorite NPC so far? Uh... I don't know. The lady that was asking for booze was pretty funny. I think I think Vanini's still my favorite overall. He's a pretty cool one. Baki and Ken Ken Ganeshura. I heard Baki was pretty hilarious. Like some just extremely unrealistic uh jacked dudes fighting each other. Like beyond Dragon Ball. Okay, so the the lady that we have to bring to this guy somewhere in the street here. Dude, no. No, don't disappear. Got some moonstone. Okay, that was good. It's a dim ergo chunk there. I didn't find that last time. I might just take this way. Oh, they, they didn't even catch me. This is obviously the superior way to do it. Oh, they, they noticed that, but they don't notice the first one? How? Are you talking about a lot of music? What instrument would you recommend to get as a first instrument? Um, to learn as a first instrument? It depends on whatever you're drawn into the most. I don't think there is a right first instrument. It's whatever you like. If you like drums, play drums. If you like guitar. If you listen to something and you, you or you watch someone play something and you're like, I really like would love to do that, then then that's the one you should play. Uh, so for me, that was guitar. Um, I also liked piano a lot too, but I didn't have a piano. And I like guitar more in terms of actually playing it. So I pick guitar, but I also really like drums. So I learned drums at a certain point too. It was a little bit later on, but it stuck and you know, it actually worked. So it doesn't even mean you're limited to um, multiple instruments. I had a friend that learned um, drums first, then, oh, sorry, he learned guitar and then he stopped liking guitar as much. Then he learned drums later and now he can play both drums and guitar. Um, maybe he can't shred on guitar, but he can play drums pretty good, so. You can always, you can always learn multiple instruments. 
there's not really a limit to what you can do. I think the, the problem is people think that once you do something that you're stuck doing that thing. It's like you can do anything you want. Just make sure you realize that your time investment's going to be the time investment and the quality of the time you invest in it with the intention is going to be what makes you good at something or, or progress. So as long as you're putting quality time in every time, you can play four different instruments pretty damn good. Probably better than half the people that even play one. And people might think that you only have one main instrument, even though you play like four of them. Um, will you be the best of all time on one? Maybe not. Will you be the best of all time on one, even if you just put all your time into one? That still might not be the case either, because there's people that just live and breathe. And they're, they, as a child, they just make crazy progress. But no matter what age you start at, you could be 60 years old and start playing music if you wanted to. There's, there's no limit. And the whole plasticity of the brain thing is a weak argument. Um, it's actually, like, it's funny because technically if you wanted to uh, keep your brain from plateauing in terms of development, you actually should be doing that kind of stuff. So, if anything, even if you don't hit it off with the instrument to the point where you're really good, it's actually just, it's impeccably good for your development of your brain. Um, so you don't actually get early onset illnesses as soon, and also so you're using um, some problem solving and some some new knowledge to to create strong pathways that actually help the health of the brain as well. It's just... It's a very, very good thing for your health, even outside of just being good at it. Not sound like an asshole, but you just started playing the piano. Why would you? Why would you? Oh, sorry, you're saying you're saying just to start doing that instead. Yeah, piano is pretty good too. A lot of people say piano is a good entry level instrument, mainly because it's less frustrating. You know, um, everything's laid out in a linear fashion. Guitar is not linear, and then also you have to you have to build the strength in your hands, whereas pressing piano keys are really easy. So that's the the ergonomics and the uh, way that the, the the theory on the actual keys are laid out in terms of the notes and the order. Super easy to digest compared to a guitar neck, but um, that doesn't matter. You don't even need to know the theory. You can, if you just like the instrument, you can, if same for drums too. Like if you just want to learn rhythms and stuff, and you don't really know what the rhythm is, or maybe you don't know the um, the technical terms for the type of drumming you're doing, you could still just like music and play it. And then that gets you into it, at least. Just don't put a lot of... Don't put a lot of limitations or rules on yourself. Just have fun. And also, if you're very patient with it and you understand you're gonna... You're gonna take some time to get to the point where you feel comfortable enough, and that's gonna happen multiple different times on different levels, then you're, you're gonna have a really good time. Also, even more importantly, if you do start anything and you can afford a teacher, hire a teacher immediately. Or if your family is paying for it, they want to give you a teacher, someone else, significant other, they want to gift you lessons. Take the opportunity to take lessons immediately. Be a very good idea. I don't think I found this place before. Uh, Legion plug, nice. Ooh. Where's this go to? Craft a Legion Arm with the Legion Plug. Nice, nice. Okay, that's a shortcut over here. That worked out, because we need to go over here. And then, where's this lady's body? Is that her? Nope. Nope. Oh, there's a lot of guys. Someday you plan to sink some time into Shallow. There you go. Cello would be really cool. Hardest part of a new instrument is going from complete novice to beginner. Yes. Barrier, barrier of entry is the hardest part, and then once you have that down, um, you already are a musician, so it's like you could learn, again, three chords on a guitar. <laughs> or just all the open positions and then just play three chord progressions and you're, in, you're a musician at that point. You don't need to do anything else. You could just do that and that you've already done it. If you want to go further, you can. It doesn't even matter if you know what you're playing or not. If it just sounds good or you're playing the song that you want to play, there you go. Some people uh, are very satisfied with that. But if you start to like kind of be self-deprecating and like dislike a lot of stuff about how you're progressing and bash on yourself, you're going to be way slower. And you're going to shut down a lot of opportunities. Wow. 
she's in a part you haven't gone to yet? Oh, okay, I thought I had to backtrack. Well, uh, thank you for telling me that. Okay, if there's anything else like that ever where I'm trying to do a quest line and I can't find the thing, then you guys can tell me. Really like violin, but isn't it too late to start learning when you're in your 30s? No, it's not too late to start learning anything in general at any point. If you can physically move your hands and you can, like, and your brain works and you can see, then, like, you can... Maybe even if you can't see, like... <laughs> could have some sort of disability and still be able to do it. So it's there's not really a time that's that's uh, incorrect. The the best time is is as soon as you possibly can. For almost everything. And the nice thing about music is you don't actually have to have like amazing physical health to play music. Her body is on Rosa Isabel Street. She used to look so beautiful in her black dress. I miss her. So her body is yeah, it's, it's mainly just patience. Like, that's the thing. If you have patience for it and you, you believe, you trust in the process, and you literally just have the smallest goal, it's like, hey, the first step is, like, this is how I break it down. If you're gonna, if I was gonna teach someone how to play guitar, well, I, I have taught people how to play guitar, but, like, if I was gonna continue to progress a whole lesson plan for someone into the beginner stage, like, where they can start, uh, like, on their own accord playing, wherever they want, it would be finger strength like learning the like the feel of it the ergonomics so getting good position for the hand and good ergonomics on just literally the strength to push down a string to make it a note that'd be the most basic level making the shape of some basic chords um, starting off with like one chord then going to two then three adding on that and then retesting the previous ones to make sure they remember what they are just in terms of even the shape not even the names necessarily you could do both and then playing them and then learning rhythm, applying rhythm and applying technique with the right hand to be able to make them ring properly and while cleaning up some of the, you know, the imperfections of the left hand and then eventually playing a three chord progression. That would be it. And you could go from doing like nothing to that literally within the same day. I've literally taught people from nothing to playing a three chord progression in one day with a proper tempo. Now, they might be super smart people, but like they've never played an instrument before, and I've taught more than a few people to do that. They also did want to learn, so I guess like if you want it badly, you're going to do it. Some people, it might take a month to do that, but no matter what, that's not that bad. A month is still not that bad at all. He literally just said you can start learning when you're 55 minutes ago. Yeah, but again, like it, it, the violin might be considered a little bit different. Like someone might look at that differently. It's not a bad question. I don't think that that's an uncommon thing. A lot of people are going to ask those kind of questions when it comes to subjects like music, because people usually look at music as something where it's like you just can do it or you can't do it. Like you're born to do it or you're not. But that's not even true. It's just some people when they're younger, they have more of a fascination. They get obsessed with it and they put a lot of time into it. And when the brain is super um, malleable, they, they make those connections um, that just become almost second nature when you're developing. So if you can do it within the age of zero to seven, then it's a lot easier, but it doesn't mean you can't do it at 50. Like I didn't do it in the zero to seven range. And I also wasted a lot of time too. I could have been like twice as good by now. So speaking from making a lot of mistakes and not starting super, super good. Like young, but not like in like the development days, right? But if I have a kid and they want to play music, I'm going to give them all the tools to play from zero to seven so that by the time they're like a teenager, they'll be better than me. Or maybe even by, you know, by the time they're 20, we'll say they'll be like more knowledgeable, um, at least at the, at the very least, like multiple times, 10 times better than me when I was that age. This guy's kind of scary. What do we do? Oh, no. Sure that Godzilla is going to attack. Godzilla, if you look at the the news, dude, they don't tell you, but like he's 100% going to attack tomorrow. So I'm getting ready. He's charging up the laser beam. Scott 
stuck with the shredding part on guitar yourself, so you want to take actual guitar classes to see if you can if you can achieve an improvement. Oh, of course. Like think of it this way too. Even if you're just left to your own devices, every time you sit down to do something, just break it down into the smallest possible step in general, and then make a consistent plan to ha how to how to train it. You know. So as long as you're putting intentional time in to achieve a certain goal, it could be like a micro component. Like maybe for shredding, the thing that you have the hardest time with is making your pinky more dexterous. So slow it down to like a, with a metronome to the smallest tempo. W work on like an exercise or a song you want to bridge the gap on, and then literally just work on that engagement of the pinky accurately at the slowest speed. Then increase it, and then add other things, and then and, long, and then add more bars, and then add more complexity, and just repeat that for every single thing you do, and you'll, you'll never be able to not learn. It's just I think people try to like do everything at once, and even I right now. I do that sometimes, so like even I know better, but I still fall into that trap. You just need to not digest it all at once. It's got to be sometimes even half of a step. Like, uh, so there's some of the best players. There's a guy that um, he was explaining. Sometimes he doesn't play. Like he grabs the guitar and he feels he like pays attention to the sensation of how he grabs it and the way he grabs it and the way he thinks about when he grabs it and the psychology of it before he even does a single thing to know that the way he approaches it before he even starts playing is the right setting for the thing he's doing even if he is practicing so he breaks it down to the part where it's like what the mind's doing and where his mind's going and then how he actually holds it not even in a technical sense but just like like the nuances, the, the little subtleties of the tension in the body and like, again, like in conjunction where the thoughts are going and stuff before you even are about to play. And if that's not dialed in, he won't do it. He won't play. That's like the master level. That That's like something you don't even see. You couldn't even tell if someone's doing that or not, but they're doing like, that's like the same thing with like uh, athletics. Like people during athletics, they're not necessarily training the things you see them physically doing. They're training the things that are the approach to starting to do the thing with their mind, right? And then the, throughout the whole process as well. And it's all invisible stuff. So there's so many different levels to digesting and breaking down things into different components and awareness as well. It's really boring when you've already made some progress and you're at like a, a level of efficiency where you're comfortable, but if you start with just being very minor, for any kind of activity, any kind of thing you want to do, it's just... You're, you're set up for success all the time, every single time. When you're younger, you also have zero responsibility. Yeah, so time investment is going to be another thing. If you can put in a couple hours a week, a few hours a week, that's amazing. But the sessions don't have to be multiple hours at all. Some of the best people only practice about an hour and a half to two hours a day. And that's people that actually tour and play music live. Some people do seven hours a day. And they're just as good as the people that do two hours. You'd be surprised. Some people don't even play every day. And they, they're, they're, they, they make money off of music professionally. Just depends on what your goals are. If you want to accomplish a lot in a lifetime, obviously there's a threshold to input, how much input you need, but then there's an there's a part where it's not the point where it's not actually really about the input and the gains from that. And the intention, it's more just you just enjoy playing that much. So it's not like necessary. Mr. Sod Grease, thank you very much, dude. I appreciate the prime save. I'm assuming that's a system of a down reference. <laughs> Favorite system of a down song if you could pick one. That goes for all the chat as well, if you if you guys like them. Don't judge yourself is key. Kids don't judge or have expectations, so they improve fast. So okay, that that is true. You should be able to have like a judgment of where you're at and then be able to be like, I wanna be here, so I'm gonna do this. But like 
judging, like being hard on yourself beyond reason is not, not important. That's kind of the idea. So that's why I said self-deprecation, but be, having judgment is good. Like being able to judge, okay, I'm here and I want to be here is a super important thing, but that's more of like an analysis or a awareness, right? So yeah, being judgmental in a bad way is just not helpful at all. Chop Suey. Chop Suey is your favorite song? Nice, nice. Toxicity. Toxicity is my favorite song. Or, um, is it, uh, a Aerials? Is that what it is? Or something like that? remember the name. Yeah, Aerials. Aerials and uh, Toxicity are my favorite. Radio video off of Hypnotize is your favorite. Super fun to play on drums. Dude, they have such good drums on all their music. That is a fact. Seems things training things in your mind is important as practicing to achieve excellency. Well, here's an interesting thing. So... There's a study of people that do bodybuilding and they were told to not lift weights. I think it was for 13 days or something like that or 14 days. I don't know if it was like a couple weeks. It was an extended period of time. And all they did was actually just visualize themselves doing the actual things and the, the, the textures, the feeling, the weight, the way the contractions were and the way the repetition pacing would be and everything in their mind. And they actually gained muscle just sitting there thinking about how, how they did it. So your mind has such a crazy effect on actually how you translate stuff that when people say visualizing things, helps it really is true but it actually goes farther beyond than we even know right now there's there's still so much science that has not necessarily even uncovered the level of actually sitting there in like making a virtual scenario where you're doing the thing you already know how to do well but to be able to do that effectively you'd already have to have a really good feel to be able to generate that exact idea right so tons of different uh, weird things like that out there Ooh, double explosion. You don't like System of a Down, it's 100% because of Surge. Ah, oh, you don't like Surge Tankian? He's such a good singer, it's insane, dude. But, like, the style he chooses to use and some of the, the tones he uses in the music can be harsh at times. There is just a lot of talent there, though, for sure. Smart streamer, Young Struff. I just have a lot of interest in um, the, the mind, the body... And, you know, different different levels of science, and I like learning as an actual meta uh, analysis, so like meta learning is important. And to understand meta learning on a higher level, you definitely need to know how it applies to a lot of different stuff. So these kind of things are just meta learning components, but it's easier to look at them as particular to a certain concept, but they really do apply universally. Though. I'm coming for you. Ugh. Can understand stylistically why people don't like him. Kind of like Tom York from Radiohead. True. Very true. It's kind of like even my like one of my favorite bands. Not my favorite band, but my one of my favorite bands, Periphery. Uh, Spencer Satello has he has like um, a higher octave range than most singers, and he can sing with such a level of just like perfection at times that it's like it's scary. But then he chooses to use some some um, modulations of his voice and some types of tonalities that are nothing like the first album they did and nothing like some of the covers he's done in person that have never been recorded that some people have seen in random videos or have like talked about. But because of how he stylizes himself in the music, like people hate on him because they, they think he sounds kind of like he's whining or something like that. But he's really talented, though. Much more talented than their original vocalist. I think you could say that about a lot of different bands, but it's like kind of what makes them have that sound too. Like uh, I was talking about Leprous recently, uh, Einar Solberg, he has an amazing, amazing voice. It's like, it's beautiful, but he he's inspired by musical theater. So musical theater plays into their music a lot. And if you don't like musical theater type sound, then you, you're not gonna like his voice, even though his voice is just objectively insane, right? So I've, so I've shown some people their music and they've literally, like, there's one person that cried and then because it was so beautiful and then there's other people that are like, that's amazing. Then half the other people are like, this just sounds terrible. It's just, they're used to hearing a lot more streamlined and basic vocals.
Definitely fits in that category for sure, yeah. Holy Mountains is a good song. I like that one too. Okay, I gotta get that or go back. 5,000. Spencer's voice on P5 is easily his best. You think so? I think there's a bit of cool stuff from every album, but P1, to me, uh, even though he wasn't really pushing it as hard, like I liked some of that stuff a lot too. And I, I hope that they would go back to that here and there for some songs, but he hasn't really done that since then. He's kind of gone like the operatic route. But he's, he's definitely gotten better objectively, though, that's for sure. I think the shortcut was down the other way before we died to these explodies. They're hidden somewhere. They're gonna pop out, right? I wonder if I could hit her through the gate. Well, maybe. I can actually. Oh, I got you. Look at that. That's so hard to dodge. Oh my god. On a hitless run, that'd be a nightmare. Thank you for the two months, dude. Welcome back. I might have already said that. I think people in 100 years don't know their personalities and just listen to their music. So I'm not too deep into the person behind. Wait, what? Why did you kill her? She just wanted to clean. <laughs> I don't, sorry, I'm, I'm not following what you said before. You think people in 100 years don't know about their personalities and just listen to the music? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. You're saying you're not too invested into the person and, and you think people in the future will just, like, they'll look at it for the music and not so much for them overall or, like, these all these other things. That's a good point. I mean, like, the perception of art and stuff like that could change. Like, it could be... I don't know. That that would take like a lot more understanding of people though, because some people just they'll say things that are purely subjective or objectively bad. And whenever I try to use objective terms, I'm saying from a technical background of like <clears throat> how is something uh, rated based on a scale. So if you had ability to perform a certain thing that is a musical idea, and then multiple different variations of musical ideas that encompass a bigger amount of um, like a bigger tool set, and your level of expertise with them is on a higher end of the scale then you outdo objectively other people, but like it still might not subjectively be someone's cup of tea. So I like whenever I say that objectively he's really good or someone's really good, it's mainly because they just demonstrate a huge variety of musical ideas at a high level. That's and and flexibility and all these other things, right? So But 100% I think that if people become more open minded, they'll they'll be able to accept it a lot better and be like, yeah, you know what? That is really cool. Um, or maybe it'll become more of an appreciated thing without them having to actually engage in it. We got the shortcut from this side, nice. Like it that you're already thinking about different runs you could do? <laughs> in this game? Ah, uh, I mean... Not quite. I wouldn't say I'm thinking of different runs right now. But I'm just kind of referring to, like, from the fact that hitless runs are similar in this game to Dark Souls, it's the same kind of game, right? That they would just be really hard to dodge, because I haven't been able to dodge them other than, like, I think twice. So, I, not that I'm planning to do that, but yeah, these guys would be a problem. 
Like that, see, see how I dodged that right there? That was very difficult. Okay, we're still looking for the NPC. Looking for his wife. I wish there was a running poke. That's a sturdy chair, dude. That chair didn't break the first time. Not to spoil it, but your least favorite mini boss is coming up. Uh oh. Ruined the entire playthrough. Yeah, this area is really cool. <laughs> Mystic, you, you couldn't agree more. That's not making me feel better about this. <laughs> you, you guys are supposed to be like, hey, this is the best boss in the world coming up. I'm so excited for you to play it. And then as soon as I hate it, then you're like, ha ha, got him. Trolled. You guys got to set me up. You're, you're too honest. This, this is lies of P. You're supposed to lie to the streamer. guys? No, thank you. I have an idea, though. I'm just gonna do this to clear them out fast. Probably not the best to waste that those, but I have more of the, the poppable ergo we can use later, so let's just try it this way. Character's happiness means nothing to me, Eliza P. Streamer. <laughs> I don't think the character can be happy. He's like a robot. <sighs> All right. We got another defense part. The heavyweight frame. 16.2, excuse me. But then physical damage reduction rate 24.35. So <sighs> when I get that third amulet slot, I don't know if I have any quartz right now. Let's see. Will it show at all in this menu? I think it's supposed to, but I'm not I'm not sure where it pops up. I always try to look for it when I don't have any. Second tab. Okay, so I don't have any. Well, when we beat this boss, I could use that that part there in conjunction with the increasing equip load amulet, but I think if I don't run that, I'm gonna be too heavy to, to make use of the the frame there. Do enemies drop weapons like in DS? They don't drop weapons, but you find them in chests, though. We found it, the yes. black dress. But it's just a puppet. What on earth is going on? She's smiling, at least. That's good. All right. Uh. I guess when we go back to the Stargazer, we can warp to another one after. So at least we found it. Get the ring to give him. I have 8,000 though. Hmm. Probably should go back now. Is this another shortcut? Oh, Dark Moonstone. Nice, nice. Did you discover about this handle on your own or did chat tell you about it? Uh, this handle? Mind Rage? Uh, what do you mean by handle? Oh, sorry. You mean the, the handle of the weapon I have right now? Oh, I just bought it. 
I, I found the ladder where the merchant was up above the area before the, the covenant, the Brotherhood Covenant. And then I just bought it. That was one thing ch chat did not tell me, actually. But I, I did read the description. I did take the advice of people saying, try to just different combinations of things and experiment with them. And I was like, you know what? The, uh, the spamming attacks thing sounds like it'd be really good on a heavy damage blade. But I'm wondering if there's a better blade I can combine with it that I already have. Because the saw thing's cool, but the base attack that it has, the base legion attack, is a little slow. It doesn't seem to knock anything over that we've been fighting. Can run past every enemy to the next stargazer if you want. I'm okay with fighting them, I just need to... Be careful. Please don't tell me there's another one of those. It's coming at me. Okay. We're, we're moving out of there. Why? Oh my god. Oh, he's like a clown. Is that the mini boss you guys were talking about? <laughs> exact same combo you use. You lost one fable that hits three times. Oh, sorry, one cost fable that hits three times. Yeah, it's crazy. And then you can just spam it over and over again. All right, we have 8,500 on the line here. This is her wedding ring. All marriage should have been filled with joy. I failed you, Melody. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned she's a puppet. But she was real to me. <laughs> you didn't mention that. He's I like, saw a shining my wife. soul inside her. Actually, Others just an automaton. But I knew the truth. I knew that she was in love with me, too. Maybe I'm crazy, though. Whoever heard of a human and a puppet in love? Uh... Is that so? That's what everyone says. <laughs> I don't know what to think anymore. I saw the letter it's that right says she loves you. <laughs> what? At least it's peaceful. This game's crazy, dude. It makes you say some wild stuff However, sometimes, or it gives you the option I to. I think it's finally time to wake up. But I don't think that means anything to me anymore. It's just a dream in the doll Thank bloodboard. Thank you Ooh. for bringing me her belongings. Actually, that's an interesting uh, give you a idea. Bloodborne doll would fit into this game pretty well. She kind of looks like a robot. She's not actually, but like she looks like a robot though. Has the uh, I am legend or not? I am legend. The I robot ish kind of kind of vibe. It's time to wake up from dreams. But I don't know whether reality will make any more sense. This is this is Mikolash before he got into the the Menzis Academy. Or the Bergenworth Academy, sorry. Now reload the zone with the Stargazer. Yeah, let's do that. It's time to wake up. You needed the ring he was gonna give you? I'm okay with missing items, it's okay. You miss another item? I'm okay with missing items, like if I'm telling the truth, if it's if it's something I don't absolutely need to beat the game. When you say I needed it, do you mean it's good or do you mean like I actually can't progress the game? Because I feel like if they give you two choices, why would they like make one lock the game, right? That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense.
Oh, it gives you an item to complete another quest, I see. Uh, was that the only shortcut, really? Wait, no, there was something else, wasn't there? There's another gate. Oh, it, it links to the first Stargazer, okay. Practically trying to escape. That was worth it. She gave me a throwing cell. You've lied throughout the entire game. You always lie. I, I heard that if you always lie for the entire game, you get a different ending. But see, if like no one told me that, I wouldn't have done that. Anyways, I would have probably mixed it up depending on what the situation was, or just mostly just said whatever actually happened to, to see. But I wonder if there's a different ending for um, being honest from the very beginning, because that hotel thing where you say that you're, uh, you're a human, I don't know how that would work. If you, if you didn't say that. You can't not lie at the, at the hotel? Okay, so then I, I have done technically like a strict playthrough of only doing the truth. Although I noticed like with me warping, dude, the my uh Ergo is like disappearing. Went from eight thousand to four thousand. It was at six thousand before that. That's not good. So we need to go here to get the other shortcut. Are you taking your vitamins today? You drinking plenty of water? Always muffler, always man. Me not drinking water, like, if you ask anybody I know, they'd be like, that's not the same person. Like, he's definitely been replaced by an imposter, dude. I, like, my one friend calls me liquid cooled, because I literally, like, I have to, like, I went from bringing one bottle of water everywhere, now I bring two bottles of water everywhere. Or I keep one in the car, and then I have another one I'll bring, and then, if it's an activity, I have to bring two and possibly buy a third drink, so. I drink a lot of liquid, dude. I probably had at least, I want to say, I've had liters today, multiple liters, but I'm not sure how many, though. Like, well over two and a half, so, yeah. Aquaman. <laughs> How's the weapon treating me? Dude, this weapon with the handle that we combine it with is really good. Ooh, the gazer becomes red. I didn't notice that before. Don't drink too much when you take medics? Like medicine? What does that do? I think that was the way we came in. Yeah, we don't want to go that way. You can wash them out, no joke. I can see how that would make sense, but I don't think I've ever been told that before. I guess that's kind of like if you were to drink a lot of water and eat a meal, you would be like heavily, heavily just like you'd have like a soup in your stomach. It wouldn't be solid food anymore. So a lot of people say like when you eat, try to minimize the amount of water you're drinking while eating or don't even drink water while you're eating and then wait and have water after or before. Sick eyes wide shut mask. <laughs> it is pretty cool. Okay, wait, where was the, the shortcut? Was, you said it was by the first gazer. Is it right here? Anyone wants to tell me? Oh, it's this door right here, maybe? No, that's the dead end. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the other area, I guess. Which is going to make me lose even more ergo. Damn it. Beat White Lady first try. I beat her in... I think two or three tries. Oh, towards the fire. So you have to actually go a little bit of distance to get there, I see. I thought it was, like, right at the gazer.
carrying around a gallon jug every day. Seems like I remember uh, there's a job my friend had like way back in the day when we were teenagers, and he drank cranberry juice and some detox thing, and apparently it worked within like two or three days. Oh my god, wait, I didn't want to do that. Oh, the ball. It's not even me, it's the ball. I'm not sure if that actually works for everybody, but yeah, you're saying cranberry juice at the very least, and then there's also something else, yeah, that you can buy, like, anywhere. Captain Straight, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Enjoy your emotes, dude. Enjoy me fighting this clown dude. It's about to go down right here. It's gonna run up on me while I'm fighting this guy, too. Mad Clown Puppet's actually a boss. That's not even a mini boss, it's legitimately a boss. I Okay, when you said mini boss, I thought you meant just something with a regular health bar. Oh, shit. I was thinking something completely different. Down here at least. <laughs> that thing extends kind of funny. Last one's a bit slower, okay. If that's the whole move set, I think I got it done. Crazy how you interact with the chat and play this game like it's Minecraft, Captain Straight. <laughs> well, dude, I play these kinds of games all the time. Like if you go to the YouTube channel, if you watch all the videos I've uploaded, it's mainly just like challenge runs and speed runs on these types of games, modded runs, stuff where it makes the game even harder than it's supposed to be. So I can't even make an excuse and say that like it's 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 like this uh secret thing that I do. It's like literally just because I'm used to playing the games. Like anybody here, if you guys play this right now and you already had streamed for years and then you also challenge yourself to go beyond that, like you'd, you'd be able to do the same thing. It'd, and so it's not that impressive when you think about it in the time investment and just the, the multiple skills coming together. But I think anybody can do that. Uh, like anybody right now that is playing this game that you watch, if that's their main kind of content, if that's their niche, you'll notice a difference between those people and the people that don't play these kinds of games. Um, just the same as like if I played Call of Duty Warzone, like it'd be a little bit harder for me to like maybe catch up with things or if I played, um, you know, other battle royales, maybe I played, uh, I don't know, a lot of different stuff. I'd be out of the element for a little bit until I learned. But I think pretty much anybody that is into FromSoft games overall, and they heavily play them on their channel, they're, they're, they're the same, if not better, in a lot of cases. The thing with me is I like to talk about the like, concepts and topics that are harder to talk about than I should have be while I'm playing this stuff, so some of the people can actually keep it simple and do even better with less time investment. That's my, my curse right now. But it's fun. Though. How much backseating is allowed? You can backseat as long as you're not telling me what's about to happen before it happens. But if I've missed something, or there's something I can do right now with items, and there's a low chance I'm going to actually figure it out, you can totally tell me. FPS players can play at high level without leaning in and contorting their face. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's a whole nother skill. 
But like anything, you could you could get better at it with time. Just like if you streamed, it would be really hard to read chat, like we are right now. But luckily, most people start with like almost no one there, so they get to build up to that. And even then, even when you start, let's say you get raided by someone. Let's say you get raided by a hundred people, and you have one viewer. You're gonna have a very hard time, even with like the 20 people that might join chat from the hundred people from the host, versus just like that one person in chat. Okay, we might be able to kill him without actually having this other guy throw anything at us. I'm feeling this attempt though. Oh, there's still the guy with the gun too. Damn it. Yeah, go away. weapon. Most definitely. Bar ran out. I'm gonna have to do that again. Ooh. That's a crazy one. It's got funny animations. Still got it. Nice. Yo, that was the stagger. I missed the angle. Damn. Playing Punch-Out? <laughs> What's your opinion on the game? Is it worth it because you want to play a game like Dark Souls and Elden Ring? Totally worth it, dude. Like, I paid full price for it. I would do it again. And if I had gotten a code given to me for free, I'd still, I'd still say it's worth buying for sure. Have I slept lately, Gabibi? Oh, yeah. I sleep every single day. What about you? <laughs> uh, synergy between pairing and dodging this game is really nice. It's cool, and then there's like the, the abilities where you can block the next attack. Uh, and then there's the retaliation. If you parry, you get the attack immediately that's powerful. There's tons of different abilities with the weapons and all that. So it's like the mechanics actually, they're really, really good at intertwining. You're not addicted to Eliza P, unlike me. Guys, imagine being a content creator and playing, like, within three days, three whole days. Imagine playing 16 hours of a game in three days and, and making content full-time. That's a, that's a bad thing, dude. That's not good. Don't do that. Play the game slower. You're too addicted. I can't stop. I need help. Do you have any recommendations? What do I do? Do I call, like, a support group? Am I supposed to go and check myself into the hospital? Is there people that can help me? My hand, my hand's twitching, dude. Fucking hand. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this is a game addiction hotline. Okay, that's good. I have to call them. 
Oh shit. Oh, I forgot about that. How'd you like AC6, by the way? Did you complete all three endings? I only got one ending for AC6, but it was really good, though. I enjoyed it. I played some multiplayer, too. That game was so in intense that it was hurting my hand, actually. When I was playing on controller, so I had to switch to keyboard for some of the playthrough. Oh, that was a crazy angle from the flamethrower. Another Crescent Moonstone, that's nice. Getting pretty good upgrade materials now. I gotta go back and see if I can use those. Do I like keyboard and mouse more? Uh, definitely controller more personally, but keyboard and mouse was so easy to aim though. It just kind of helps because they have the auto assist system, so I think with the controller you can actually do just as good. Uh, at least from what I've seen. I don't know if that would change if you're like a super high level PvP player or something like that. Following is gonna leave here. Oh, he does the, the thing after that, too. Nice. Damn it. Close, dude. Close. I want to... Okay, I want to use the saw blade next time. Just the charge attack is really slow, so... But dude, that that fable bar with the saw thing is just nuts. Like that would that would kill him in like probably two staggers, easy. If I could get the actual charge attack, it's the only hard part about it. So I want to try this and see if I can time the charge attack a little bit. Maybe trade with him. His creepy face is so good. That is one of the coolest clowns I've seen in a video game for sure. I like his move set too. It's pretty funny. I like when he like. <laughs> when he when he puts the chain out when it extends like it's it's so slow it it almost doesn't even look real it's like a it's like an arm or something I thought he was gonna whip me with it this clown has so much health it's stupid <laughs> when he go go gadgets yeah charge attack slowness is largely compensated by the huge range thing is the only neat thing. Only thing that's, that's annoying is that you're gonna bump into walls. True, true. Very true. Oh, I went around. Disney cartoon? This <laughs> this game could be really funny if it was a Disney cartoon. Actually, a 2D version of this with the same story. I'd like to see that. Like, not even necessarily made by the developers, but if someone made Kind of like what they did for Elden Ring, they did the Cuphead style Elden Ring trailer. A little video, that'd be so cool.
If you want some info, you can improve the run back. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there a shortcut? Alright, come and get me. Do SS flasks increase as you progress? You can actually increase the, the pulse charges. Such a surprise that Neo is made of souls like. So, what do they usually do? I'll try three of these right away and see what happens, and the cube. Going all in on this one. Hey, if you keep doing that, I'm just gonna chill here. I'm good. how crazy this is. That was a little taste. Time. Ooh, that one didn't go through. He's doing a little dance after, that's funny. There's a gazer past him, you can run past and spawn very close if you die. Oh, okay. This run back's not terrible. But yeah, that might be a good idea. Punch your nose back through your face. <laughs> I have a nose on the back of my head. Good thing I didn't lie too many times or it would be too long and then I'd have a problem. Neowiz is the editor. Round 8 are the ones who made the game. And what does round 8 usually do? Yeah, like this isn't nearly that far. It's just... Like these guys aren't even going to chase me either. I just need to be careful of going in there. Uh, Figgy, it's going pretty good. How are you? Oh, he did chase me this time. I said that and it happened. Other one's trying to as well. He's going to back away, though. I dared you to do it. Oh. Didn't take as much damage there. So we, we could just kill him with this this time because I don't have all of the, the blue built up. Let's try it. 
There's just that one combo that has the very delayed elbow or whatever, the backhand, and then he does the, the jump, or he does the belly flop. Doing pretty well. Just been working a lot, Figgy. I appreciate you making some time to be here. That's awesome. I hope it's all been going well for you. Been going smoothly. Also, uh, Helios, have a good sleep. Thank you for hanging out, dude. So little healing in this game seems very punishing. Yes, but then also things don't really do as much damage as some of the other games like this would do. Especially given the fact that you don't have defense from your armor directly. It's like from other things, so it's pretty forgiving in terms of the damage is not insane. So far. Some status effects are pretty well. Oh, he's so polite. He got out of the way of the guy. That's cool. I think that's better damage, dude. <clears throat> I do not think that's better damage. Ooh. Get out of there. Oh, he did that close range. finish it. Doing the other R2 helps a lot. Okay, so you guys really hated this guy. This guy's been my favorite enemy in general. My favorite unique enemy in the entire game so far. He was really cool. You hated him, he beat your ass. He beat my ass too, but that was really fun though. It's a really cool idea as well for the clown because you're, you're in the entertainment district, right? So he's like a performer. Kind of reminds me of a fat official from Demon Souls, like the original one, but just a little bit more of a clown. <laughs> Thank you for the GGs, guys. He's a hoe. That reminds me of uh, Riley from Boondocks. Granddad, she's a hoe. Like, no, he's not, boy. Don't, don't, don't you be saying that. Like, but Granddad. Too damn bad. Oh, uh, okay. You love the boondocks? Me too, dude. It's like one of my favorite things. I've seen all of them multiple times. Um, but we probably won't see too many things from boondocks on the stream because I'll probably get banned. So. <laughs> okay, we got the gold coin tree 8 out of 8. So I wonder if that's actually going to help us with the other dude. 
Let me go back to... Where was it? It was just the hotel, I guess, and then he's outside of there. Uncle Ruckus, dude. Uncle Ruckus is amazing. Just ran by him, got the Stargazer, and attacked him from behind to skip the mobs. That could be a lot smarter. I could see that. It's level. Uh, 18 It's pretty good for the vigor already. Time to get a bit more health and then a bit more damage. And then let's see these golden coin fruit things. What's going on with that? Should read a full transcript from the Thugnificent episode on stream. Yeah, that'd be pretty bad. Don't know if that would go down too well. Yeah, I highly recommend watching it if you don't take things too seriously Stalker, and you can understand please. that they could get away with if a lot more in the earlier 2000s. Me, I'll give you a reward. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, so he actually doesn't care. He's, he, I thought you have to give them to him and then he can Stalker, actually finally cure the please. sickness. So I'm just going to use them to purchase more of these then. Uh, the stamina one, I don't know if it really helped me too much, but... Oh, I need to go and harvest more of the fruit, that's why. So eight out of eight are available. Yeah, looks like Chris Angel. <laughs> that's funny, we have Gerard Stalker, from My Chemical please. Romance. I got Mr. X with you hair, and then we got Chris Angel. It's amazing. All right, going back. Uh, is there another big boss coming up soon, guys? Because I was going to end right now. So if there's another one, we can check it out for like a minute or two. See if I can get like maybe a couple tries and get it. But I was planning to be done about a half an hour ago. So I want to know how, how much farther am I from the next major point. If we have... Stella Opera House entrance. 20 minutes away to get there. Okay. Well, then we're going to leave it on this note. Um, how much How much percent would you say I've beaten of the game today now at this point? Are we closer to like 40% or so? Maybe 50%? Just so I have an idea of how to, how to plan the rest of the streams. Almost half? Okay, cool. A young Alice Cooper. <laughs> Those are all relevant ideas for this, this guy. 40 to 50%. Okay. Did I use the quartz? I, I haven't, but I'll use it next time when we start, though. So we're going to be back again tomorrow in the afternoon, probably around the same time we were live today, uh, maybe a little bit earlier even. And I'll try to make tomorrow's stream a tiny bit longer just because I do want to power through the rest of this. And it's it's getting pretty good, dude, too. It's, it's actually funny because I feel like I've streamed three hours and we streamed six, which is a really good sign for a first playthrough. So, yeah, hopefully you guys have been enjoying it. Here are the socials. Definitely check out the YouTube. I'll have a review of this game on it when I'm done. Uh, and then check out the Discord. Check out the TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Twitter's for when I go live ahead of time. Just lets you know when I'll be live later in the day. Discord's instant updates when I go live from the bot. TikTok just has some clips that you might have not seen and some edits. And then um, YouTube has a bunch of other videos. Instagram has just some stuff from behind the scenes. And yeah, I'm going to find someone I can host and surprise them. If they are playing this game, however, I'm going to warn you guys in case you don't want to see spoilers yourselves. So we're going to see who's live right now. And then I won't I won't actually watch their stream. I'm just going to tab out and listen to it for a second. But we'll see who is live. Everyone's playing Lords of the Fallen. Oh, we got V-Sweat playing Liza P still. Best souls like ever in the title too. Okay. Interesting. Got Ben Rice. I'm going to rate Ben Rice. It was his birthday recently. Say happy late birthday for the raid if you guys could. Ben Rice is one of the strongest people in general. And I don't I don't say that lightly. The guy's getting up to like a 900 pound deadlift. He does a lot of powerlifting. He's doing a session right now. He plays a lot of Final Fantasy. Does Souls Challenge runs, tons of different stuff. He plays music, uh, piano, and he sings. Very good uh, musician as well. You're going to see a lot of different stuff on his channel, but he's a good friend. Known him for a while. And again, one of the strongest people I've ever seen, dude. I think he won Tyler 1's powerlifting meet. So, 
Yeah. Really cool, dude. I'll see you guys in Ben Rice, in Ben Rice's stream, and then again tomorrow. What doesn't he do exactly? Well, he's not Spider-Man, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, see you guys again tomorrow. Let's go.